PGL Tavern Tales Spring Season. My name is Nimsh and I'm here with Lothar and Raven to bring you the third day of the tournament. We've seen some highlights, we've seen a lot of excitement, but we are here now for the third last day. Yeah, we actually saw a lot of crazy games yesterday from top 16 to uh, for the guys that are qualifying through top 8. So, uh, really good experience, actually. It's definitely a long day, but full of great games. Even the very last match of yesterday was crazy. Oh, Absolutely. yeah, there were a lot of shenanigans, as you said. <laughs> but uh, for me, what was weird is that the outcome of the games that we have seen, like the highlights from yesterday, all uh, like almost all of them could have been different if the defending player, like the losing player, could have m would make one little choice differently, right? There was like killing the one one against the shaman when he was playing the paladin with the Tyrion, uh, playing the Reno Jackson. Maybe the whole match would have been ended ending differently if that play would have been made. Absolutely, but let's uh, first talk about how we got here because uh, we had 32 players to start the tournament. Uh, they started with the qualifiers. And then uh, we had the Swiss part that we had uh, two days ago. It feels like eternity ago, <laughs> actually. Yeah, um, it was it was a really good stage actually, and seeing uh, you know Tice was the, the guy who, uh, who who made it through. But again, just to reiterate, these guys all came through the qualifiers, so uh, 428 mans uh, online with a lot of you know it was pretty stacked tournaments as far as I was concerned, with a lot of uh, a lot of the best players in the world actually uh, trying to qualify for this one. Absolutely, and then we had the Swiss part. Lothar, did you enjoy the Swiss part? I think. Swiss is always great. It's, it always brings more leg legitimacy. Oh, God. Please help me. Legitimacy. Thank you. There you go. Uh, <laughs> to a tournament when you can when you can say, yeah, I won for a Swiss round, you know, a Swiss portion of the tournament because everyone is like, oh, okay, that means yeah, you actually good at the game. It's yeah, it almost like nation. demands respect from anyone yeah. who knows what they're talking about in terms of tournament format. And then your player exactly. actually went undefeated. Yeah, and I'm happy about that. Then we'll see actually Thais playing in the first match today. But uh, for me, it's important to have more Swiss tournaments in general. So I'm really happy to be casting this uh, this PGL event. And I hope like PGL will be doing more of them. Because yeah. it's actually cool to see and have those, um, those Swiss portions. Maybe what I would like to see in the future is the fact that a, a smaller cut would have been made from the, uh, from the Swiss itself. Because mm. it seems like half of the portion from the Swiss... Yeah, that's kind of like, you know, a lot of space for errors. Yeah, yeah but it did cut actually perfectly. Yet all the people who went 3-2 in the Swiss portion uh, went through and all the people who went 2-3 uh, and below actually got eliminated in the mm -hmm. early stages. And it also made a difference because if you make the, uh, if you make top 16, you were guaranteed $500 at least. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's for sure. And, and also bear in mind as well that even though I, you know, I completely understand what you say in terms of, you know, a six, like half of the Swiss getting cut into the top bracket, mm -hmm. um, it sort of is deemed maybe a little bit easier than some of the Swiss tournaments. But then they're in a 16, uh, 16 man single elimination bracket, so that's when you know it really starts to ramp up in difficulty. If you drop a set, you're out. Absolutely, yep. and uh, we had a lot of players eliminated as well, like Gara eliminated in the early stages uh, of the tournament. But this was the bracket for uh, for yesterday, and uh, we've seen uh, eight matches at least. We've seen actually more, um, taking into consideration the show matches that we had oh as well. Oh yeah, that was exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Two decks with zero attack minions. Yep. The, there was there were a couple of attack wait, wait, minions. Wait, yeah, there was the Eerie statue and Ancient Watchers. Ancient Watchers, yeah. 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 They, they could attack. And uh, <laughs> there was actually a huge misplay uh, by Fishu that uh, he didn't Shadow Flame Lord Walker show. It's not something you do every day. Yep. yep. It's definitely not something you, you've probably ever done in the, in the <laughs> game. I, don't, I know I've never done it. Ever will but think uh, even about it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a little bit crazy. All right. But let's talk about uh, yesterday. We've seen that some highlights. Um, Lothar, you've mentioned that there were a lot of plays where, where people could just uh, do one more thing and they would actually... Mm -hmm. uh, not lose the game. I, I just like to point that out to the people that are watching the tournaments because usually they, they um, tend to say it's all RNG yep. and stuff and I want to prove them differently because Hearthstone is one of the hardest games to play perfectly and um, you can see those those mo small differences in the, in the decision making of the from, from the players, right? Like in example, Athena's yesterday could have easily equalized the series to be 2-2 and maybe win the third game. But solely on his mistake by from when he didn't play the Rune Jackson, he gave the, the, the chance away, yeah. right? The same goes for Vince. He could have 
1-1 game could have been 1-2 instead of a 3-0 and that would make a huge difference too, right? He would have eliminated the face shaman and then maybe his secret paladin could have made a, a comeback. Right? Especially in last year of standing as well where we've seen a lot in this tournament where, you know, this format is a little bit different from Conquest in the fact that you can actually just sweep. If your lineup is super strong then uh, your opponent's decks after you maybe get one of the awkward ones out of the way can mm -hmm. maybe have like really hard matchups against the rest of your decks. So, you know, the lineup's actually uh, really impactful in this. And, and we saw that come through yesterday with a few with a few three O's there. Absolutely. Yeah. And for today, we have uh, at least seven matches. We have Thais versus Powder coming up first, then Moody versus Unid, Janadrid versus Scraffy, Traki Style versus Arne, and then the sem semifinals and the grand final. And there is also a, a big difference in money and HCT points. At the moment, all those guys in the top eight, they have guaranteed $1,000 at least, and uh, they have two HCT points. But uh, you can see on the screen how it's... Um, how it changes. Yep. So we have two and a half K and five HTC points uh, for the third and then fourth place, right? So every single player that we'll be seeing right now in the first four games will be battling for that. If he wins, he gets the bonus one uh, one thousand five hundred dollars and three points, and then he has a chance to even you know double that yeah. and be in the finals, get the praise and um, you know, get the prize. Absolutely, I, I'm super happy to see that um, that the top two players, like the, we we talked about the, the the winner getting 15 points, but the second place is getting 10 points as well, which means that he's also qualified for the prelim. Uh, Most for likely, yeah, Most yeah. Likely. yeah. Unless something crazy, because this uh, this season is actually going to be over three months, I believe. Three months. So, yeah. so there is a longer time, so the points won't be as low as they were in the uh, the winter season. But you, but yeah, you know, with 10 points additions, you know, these players are pretty good. They're probably earning their HCT points as well mm -hmm. on top of this, so they're not going to only be on 10 so uh, yeah it's a huge boost and, and almost guarantees them through all right and uh, ties versus powder coming up next um, this is the match we're going to see uh, what are your predictions guys well i'm biased <laughs> <laughs> i wonder what lothar will say yeah but um, i'm picking ties his consistency is ridiculous like that's the reason why he is here, right? So, I mean, I don't, uh, I don't say, I'm not saying that Powder isn't consistent because we are seeing him in a lot of tournaments as well. I'm kind of sad that they are meeting right now, though, because yeah, it seems like the upper bracket or, or, um, of the round of eight is kind of more stacked with w with the more known names than the lower uh, bracket, right? Yeah, and let's be honest, uh, Powder versus Ties could easily be the finals. You yeah. know, like it just wouldn't be a surprise to anyone, but mm -hmm. definitely the you know a great way to kick off the day. Um, it's a tough one, I think. I, I think both guys are really good. I think Powder's in a really good mindset, though. So I think uh, he might have the ability to change it. And even before we saw the guys were talking about, oh, you know, like, oh, what sort of de did he change the decks much? Or oh, did, right. did you mess we didn't about? talk about that. Yeah, so, so the guys can change the decks from yesterday to today. But when they've changed them, it's not that they can change them every round. It's that they can change them once for the start of the day, and that's it for the whole tournament. So unlike yesterday, you can't actually fully prepare just for one player. You have well, to well, you can if you want to try and, like, you know, increase your chances at yeah. top four, mm -hmm. but then it will de potentially decrease your chances to actually finish up the tournament and win it. So um, it's going to be interesting to see how each player's approach this um, and how they've chose to prepare. But, yeah, I, I, I like Powder here. Tyus is super consistent, and in this tournament as well, he's performed incredible, being the, the player to 5-0 in the Swiss. So... I just think it's going to be a great game overall, actually. Absolutely. Yep. From my perspective, I was talking to uh, to both Tyson and Powder a bit, and it seems like Tyson uh, wants to stay um, to his guns, and he can't really change the decks that much, where Powder can play anything and can always change the, the decks as, as he wishes to. But we actually sat down and talked with those players uh, before, so let's see what they have to say for themselves. We had one game to play today and it turned out to be a 3-0 victory, so couldn't be happier. Uh, I played my match against Like a Boss. Uh, it was, uh, I didn't know much about him, I actually didn't know what he played the day before. Um, but I expect, uh, I decided to not change too much about my lineup because I was really comfortable. It was uh, also pretty late and I just wanted to go with the same strategy. Um, it made a bit small tech choice still because I didn't want to play exactly the same decks. And yeah, I won 3-1. Uh, I first won a game with uh, my patron warrior and afterwards two with the zoo. And, yeah, pretty happy about that. Uh, when it's my turn, um, I normally like, you always have some sort of idea in mind um, what you're gonna do from, I mean, you're sitting there staring at the screen while your opponent is thinking, so obviously something's going on in your mind beforehand, but 
take a second look at what cards you have in your hand and uh, then after you've kind of made a decision or when I've made a decision um, I think about what my opponent's gonna do next turn and if that doesn't change what I was thinking of doing I'd pretty quickly play what I decided. If I will go to the final, then there are still really good players at the bottom bracket. Uh, I know uh, Crane is there, um, Freak is there, players I respect, but also um, a bit more unknown players. Uh, also some uh, Arne from Belgium, I, I would like to face him too. Uh, I actually don't really have uh, sp somebody specific, but I just hope it will be a really good final. Dice versus Powder, where uh, I had both of them on the couch at some point, and they were doing some smack talk. So Powder said, "Come at me, bro," and Ty's just uh, looked at the ground. It's like <laughs> I'm just going to play my best. <laughs> Ty's like the ultimate nice guy, though. Yeah, to be he's, fair, he's isn't a polite he? guy. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, it's not often I've seen Ty like even look unhappy. Never mind anything else. So. Uh, yeah, yeah. I just no, always too much of a surprise. I just, <laughs> just always come back to the moment in uh, in Sweden when Thais was facing, I think, Colento uh, for the qualification to the first BlizzCon, and uh, somebody asked Thais to be uh, well aggressive with the smack talk and everything, and Thais just looked at Colento and said. I, I'm I'm going to win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the so about as much, is real. Yeah, like, about as much as aggression as Tice could muster. Um, <laughs> no, I, I like Tice. I like the fact he's always super nice. Well, and happy. There, are, there are players that can banter and feel natural in it, and you feel like yeah, he's doing that because like he's, powder he's when he was like he came across half joking when he's like I'm gonna wreck you tomorrow, and it's like you know he's yeah. actually thinking that. <laughs> yeah, and there are players who who just are like nice. They just want to focus on the game and yeah. you know. That's about it. And if they do banter, then it feels forced, and that's not something that you would yeah. like to see. Absolutely. <laughs> but then again, like, when, you, when you sit uh, in front of Thais, uh, like Powder right now, you, you do see that giant in front of you because you know this guy is the European champion. Yeah. He won DreamHack Bucharest. He was in the finals of DreamHack Winter, and he won a multitude of our tournaments as well, cups, whatever. Like He qualified if he wasn't, when he wasn't invited. So uh, yeah, and that's shown even on the uh, the actual predictions there. So we saw uh, Twitter, uh, Twitter, Twitch was on like I think eighty six percent for Ties, mm -hmm. uh, high uh, percentage for Twitter as well, seventy one from Gosu Gamers. So well, you can't really be um, think about Gosu Gamers having a different percentage because Ties is the first in the rankings, right? Yep. He is in the world. Yeah, he's capping at one thousand four hundred points over over yeah. even that. So the next player that has the second place has around. 1,280 or something like that. That's a yep. huge difference. Absolutely. But then on the other hand, Powder were, uh, himself were in many, many finals before. Uh, he failed to grab the win, but uh, he made it to at least seven finals of, of big tournaments. And he's also qualified through um, the, the portion. Like He got uh, famous because he was qualifying to tournaments like Jafinity yeah. and um, Vigim House Cup, just going through lots, lots of people and, and being one of the kings of ladder himself. Yeah, and I think it's really important for Powder as well because he, he's feeling really good. He's like, every time I spoke to him this weekend, he's like, yeah, I'm really happy. Obviously, he's winning, so that's a bonus, mm -hmm. but he's really like happy and pumped for it and ready, even though he looks like he's about to fall asleep right now. Um, I don't know if he went out last night or anything, but uh, he's definitely up for this, and I'm uh, really happy to actually play Tice. Well, most of the gamers are not a early bird, right? So. That's true. <laughs> it's, not, it's not the natural time for these guys to be awake. Yeah, it's, um, it's actually noon local time here. But when you count in the jet lag, right? It's one hour before for that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that that's super heavy jet lag. Yeah, super heavy <laughs> jet lag. I'm sure that some CSGO teams from NA would have made that excuse. Yeah. <laughs> and well, but uh, Raven, as you've mentioned, like um, gamers, uh, we do meet each other on those events. Like there is a whole community here. So all the people, 32 players. So there's a lot of players you want to spend time with, which normally don't meet because they, they live in different cities, different countries. And uh, this is an opportunity not only to play Hearthstone, but also to hang out. Yeah, it's a big part of the draw of events like this. I think that there's very few players I've met who are like, yeah, I don't really like meeting other people. Like, you know, other pl <laughs> other players at events, like, it's a really big draw in there. There are some. Yeah, I said very few. I didn't say there were none. <laughs> but it, even like, uh, and the way the studio is set up, the, you know, the players are actually hanging out in the studio with us here. And, you know, they have been doing for the past couple of days. So that's really cool to see. But the first game has started and it's going to be Powder's Secret Paladin versus Tyson. Zoo. And the lineups are the same. They both run Paladins, Warlock, and uh, and Warrior. Uh, we do not know if they're, they're exactly the same archetypes, but uh, at least classes are the same. Yeah. 
Yep, and that's quite surprising. Porter kept the noble sacrifice while Z while Zoo is known for playing like heavy death rattle minions, and even the Void Walker is like the perfect country yeah. for the noble sacrifice, right? That kind of caught me off off guard because I was thinking that he will be rather looking for mini bot, mm. which is like super effective as. The noble sacrifice, even better than yeah, the noble sacrifice, Yeah, I, I think right? the like the only reason really I could think to keep it was to just slow the game down enough, a and then also counter. Although the Void Walker is really good to counter cards like Flame Imp and Knife Juggler potentially. Even mm -hmm. Dark Peddler being played with the coin sometimes it happens. Mm. Ooh, I see Giant early in the hand. It kind of changes stuff if he will draw into an implosion and your opponent has masterful battle. Mm. Right, because then you like fill the board with just two cards. It's crazy when you think about it. Yeah, and this is one of the matchups where the Sea Giant does does the work, right? And this is why this deck even exists to a certain extent, because Zoo is really common, which obviously wants to build up the board and makes your Sea Giants easier. Secret Paladin the same. They they're all about the board. Uh, so yeah, this is going to be interesting, especially with double muster as well. Like, Absolutely, you know, that could really start to get a bit crazy later on. Yeah, but he needs the mini board right now. Ooh. Yeah, and he missed uh, he missed the draw. But to put to put things into perspective, like I believe this matchup is actually favoring Zoo a bit, uh, and uh, especially with that opening, uh, flame him into Void Walker is exactly what you want. Like in almost any matchup. Any <laughs> that's <place. laughs> that's because that that opening is like one of the most intimidating openers from the beginning of the game, like from the beta, right? Yeah. Void Walker into Flame and like, oh my god, yeah. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> game, <laughs> like concede. Warrior's like, where's my fear war axe? <laughs> yeah. Even if I have it, it's not really... Still gonna soak so yeah. much damage, yeah. And if you think that Flame got actually nerfed, it's still intimidating. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it dealt two damage in the yeah. beginning of the game. It's kind of funny, because like, the Warlock, to a certain extent, doesn't care about his health, unless he's on board. <laughs> <laughs> like, he's just like, yeah, I'm just going to be really aggressive in life tap a lot. Well, it makes a huge difference uh, against a Hunter. Because it's like yeah. one hero power for free for the Hunter, right? Yeah. If you play two. So close, let's see Giant. Oh, wow. That's a good top deck. Yeah, I think Tice is really on, on the better end of the opening draw here. Obviously, you know, we discussed the the, uh, the initial turn one opening, which was really strong. But even the egg, because he has abusive uh, that you can use later on. Uh, mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. now, you know, him gang boss is, is going to be insane. Even mm -hmm. regardless of the fact that the sea giant's in hand, he, imagine that wasn't even there. Yeah. The him gang boss is still insane versus Paladin. But look at that. The sea giant can be played next turn. And, and Most well, likely. It can be played, yeah. And uh, we talked to, to Tice about it. If he said that if Sea Giant is 4-4 four, four mana, it's great. Yeah. Well, obviously, right? It's <laughs> it, it minion for 4 mana. That's yeah, but like it's, it, if it's for, for 5, it gets um, a bit awkward maybe. Oh, and yes. uh, if you can play it even cheaper, it's, it's obviously better. I think it's even even better as well because it's on curve, right? Which is, yeah. is a little bit crazy. You don't expect it. Like late in the game when you can do like implosions to Sea Giant. It would be for free mana even. Look at that. You can play Abusive Surgeant, pop the egg, and get it. Actually, it will be for two mana, right? If you attack first with the imp. No, 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 wait, it, that doesn't change a thing. Yeah, because the gang boss yeah, dies, yeah. right? G because the 1 1 dies. If you attack it into 1 1, that's what I was saying. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so um, this is this is an interesting one, though, because like if you pop the egg, you pop it on the shredder. So then. Then you have to attack with the imp. Yeah, boss which the just shredder. feels. Can you still silence? No, you, you'll not be able to play it for... Because you like need to play the giant this turn. So if you abuse the giant it's for free mana, you have free mana. If you um, attack with Imp Gangboss into Shredder, you generate one more minion, so his, it's for two mana. And if you play an Iron Beagle, no, actually you have to silence first. Okay. I actually don't mind not popping the AK. Um, you just trade in with a 1-1 one -one maybe with the Imp Gang Boss, generate another token, because mm -hmm. if you pop the egg, it ju you just throw the Gang Boss away, and the whole point of it is it generates the tokens to then challenge the Paladin's minions. So I, I prefer this. Like you don't, okay. have, you don't always have to squeeze in the extra minions to uh, you know, like make the Sea Giant cheaper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I see what you're saying. All right, Coghammer can help maybe with the Giant, but there's a lot of other minions um, to deal with first. Uh, if he goes into Imp Gang Boss, then kills both Imps, Coghammer attack with the Divine Shield into the Giant. He has a 4 free taunt, 2 free attack, and he can follow up with. Uh, he, he, he could Creeper, do this play, trade the two 1 1s in, then Coghammer. Yep. Oh, oh, yeah, use the weapon. Meh. Kill the 1 1s. <laughs> See, whatever you want to do, guys. Now you play around the second Sea Giant. So you want to have less minions. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> 
Um, okay, so oh, he's, he's not going for the cog hammer. Yeah, I guess he's just taking the damage here. Because the problem was, like, the reason I sort of naturally went to trade the two one ones in, so you get the cog hammer on the shredder. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you force like the you know like the awkward attacks in, and uh, the shredder pretty much kills whatever attacks it, other than the sea giant. I'm kind of surprised by this, but it, it's got heavy punch by the silence, and we see that Tice has a silence, so maybe. That was the fourth process for um, for powder, just to play around the silence. Well, also the Is secret. he duking a second uh, noble sacrifice? <laughs> wow, a damage to the face. Yeah, that's huge, um, especially <laughs> because he has the burst in hand, doom guard, and abusive. Double abusive. <laughs> well, now Tyson has to think. Okay, if this is competitive spirit, how does this change yeah. my line of play this turn? If it's avenge, how does this change my line of play? It's it's not an easy turn at all. You no, might actually okay. want to keep uh, your silence if Avenge lands. Um, he goes for the Shredder kill here. That's fine as well. Yeah, Getting I think this is good because if it is Avenge, well, Avenge is going on a smaller minion, right? So yeah. and then the Shredder's dealt with. You just forget about it now. Yeah, still no way to kill the Giant then. And you have a 4-4 four, four, and double 2 one. Basically, so dealt with. No. you nice. dealt with, with the Death Rattle, which is basically almost... It, it, can, it potentially can be... Uh, it can be worse than the Avenge, so maybe it was worth to pop it first and then silence the the Avenge? Yeah, I was thinking about it, but I think uh, getting rid of the 4-1 four, uh, four Shredder... And yeah, because uh, you guarantee like the minion off the board, right? Yeah, and now that was a huge swing turn for Powder, because not only he developed a lot of uh, minions of on board, he also stopped the the, the giant, giant from attacking for one turn. Right? Yeah, and this is actually this could go slight swing the other way really hard now because next turn he can cog hammer and play maybe whatever else he draws, mm -hmm. um, to slow him down even more because Zoo doesn't really have any burn from hand. Yeah, it's all minion based damage. So you know, like the cog hammer is then going to be really awkward to deal with because he still has these one ones to like trade into the two one. So um, you know, he can stop one attack from all these two big minions here, like the Doom Guard mm -hmm. or the. Uh, Oh, the Sea Giant, it looks like... Is Tice just going to go face here? Yep. Yeah, I yeah. really like that being the aggressor. And making your opponent do the trading yeah. instead of you, right? This and it set up also a lot of potential ways of winning next turn. Like a yeah. Dark Peddler so far, for example. Yeah. Also. Like even if the board gets cleared, you have your opponent on four, so you still have a chance to, to get that. Yeah, this is crazy, though, because I'm pretty sure that Powder can trade in a way that he almost guarantees the car camera on the 9-8. Um, and then he's already seen an owl, and if he survives just one more turn, then he drops Tyrion. Mm -hmm. It's going to be very difficult for the, for the uh, for Tice to get through the, the kind of wall. Well, well other other than a peddler like Soulfire or second yeah, owl. I'm sure that will happen next time. Yeah. <laughs> you confident? Yeah. The top we, we've seen that before. Into Soulfire. <laughs> well, he can tap right uh, if uh, Powder spends his turn actually killing the minions. Uh, Tice will still have a healthy um, pool of, of health. So this oh. needs to be called hammer, right? Wait, is yeah, but you just trade. Well, oh, tango, tango, one damage off, right? Yeah, I think you just clear the board, right, and leave the ten nine taunt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just use the divine shield on the mm -hmm. ten nine to kill the eight eight. And then that becomes very, very difficult for Tice to punch through when you follow up his Tyrion. You can even go for um, master for battle, I, th I think. Like you could have probably played master for battle first. Yeah, that was a slight mislead. No, 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 uh, no you, because you know, the divine you shield. Need, you need the divine, the divine shield. Oh yeah, 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 right, yeah, right. Yeah, 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 this is this is right. Yeah, I think you do trade because the the moment you don't, there's a s randomly a second owl appears, <laughs> and then you just die. I just <laughs> think it's wor it's just worth trading. Um, it's unlikely that people play the second owl, but uh, is there anything else that can actually deal with this? Like a random big game hunter, maybe. Uh, definitely knife not juggler. knife juggler. Well, you need to tap. Oh. Doesn't change anything, so this uh, wow. this will be it. Well, that that mysterious challenge on turn six did some work. Yeah, it's like win card in this <laughs> situation. T powder was in a really bad position, but you can see the power of mysterious challenger that single-handedly changed the whole game. Yeah, single-handed. Yeah. I think we've seen that before uh, when Arne was playing Athanas. Uh, it seemed like Arne is really behind with his Paladin, and then he had this one swing turn when everything just swapped. And uh, uh, Athanas, even though he was in the lead, he, he pulled a lot of damage. He's the great opening on the back of Mr. Challenger and Secrets. 
uh, working in a correct order, he was able to just take the board. And this was the same. It was not only Mystery's Challenger, it was the fact that the Sea Giant could have been blocked by Noble Sacrifice, which forced the Doom Guard. Yeah, I mean, that, that was the key point, the Sea Giant not being able to get the attack mm -hmm, off. Because mm -hmm. imagine if before that there was an implosion, a creeper down for ties, so then, you know, the odds of him having, like, the tokens or something to just attack yep. him with, and then the Sea Giant hits for eight, and as we could see, he ended the game on four. So, you know, that would have just been game yeah. there and then. So that Noble Sacrifice blocking a single Sea Giant just won that and game. And Hammer actually, as well, right? Because Hammer uh, enabled uh, an easy kill or just going for face. Uh, yeah. He didn't have to, to spend his Mystery Challenger being 10 attack to just trade into the Giant for free. I don't think it was even about the Divine Shield. It was just, just about having the taunt. In yeah, the yeah, way. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just because that... Um, I suppose the only difference is, though, that even if it was... Um, even though it got buffed from the Cog Hammer, he could have traded in the Sea Giant because he had Tyrion to follow up with. So yep. although it wouldn't have guaranteed the win, of course, because crazy things can happen, but uh, even the follow up with Tyrion. And, th and this this is just huge, this this bit where he just clears the board, has the exact minions he needs, uh, especially with the combination of uh, competitive spirit straight into Cog Hammer and Air. Uh, Feels pretty good for Powder, I but think, I like at this moment. I like the decision uh, by Tais uh, that he decided to go for face uh, instead of trading in the Mysterious Challenger because he knows that um, the, the long game actually favors Paladin in that spot where there can be a second Mysterious Challenger, there can be Tyrion that will block him and he will just have to lift up and get lower and lower and it will be tougher for him. Where um, a, a second Owl maybe, I don't know if he plays Double Owl, but uh, that Dark Peddler I'm is so sure far. He doesn't. But um, du double peddlers into some Absolutely. crazy stuff can happen, right? You can yeah. get a boar and you can then charge with PO, an example, mm. instead of a sulfur. If you somehow go through the taunt, right? Because yeah. maybe there's a way that you will damage the uh, the divine shield for for one with a knife juggler, an example. Yeah. And then you just kill the taunter, and then you have an option to d get the dark peddler and have few outs possible from the discovery. So I like what. Powder also did was just ignore the, the giant, just go to the face, yeah. win the next turn. Knowing exactly what are the outs. Like, even I was uh, curious, Implosion with Knife Juggler could also deal um, a lot of damage to face if, yeah. if it's. Yeah, and that's. And implo uh, drawing Implosion in general would have changed that matchup quite a lot, I think. So, a uh, little bit of a rough one for Ty's. Powder played it well. Um, and now the next match is going to be Paladin Mirror. Yeah, yeah Paladin, Paladin Mirror. Mirror. It's kind of. Kind of sad to see that you have to deliberately pick Paladin into a Paladin to ensure that you have the best matchup. <laughs> so, well, Zoo was a good matchup. Um, it was obviously like close to 50 but 50, Ty but Tice is running Warrior though. That might be a Contra Warrior then. Yeah, so it's interesting. If that, if that would be Patron, you probably pick Patron into a Paladin, but if this is Contra Warrior, you don't want to uh, play versus Secret. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. We'll see how it turns out as we see Powder's opening. Starts with a secret again, although he did not keep this one. But, but redemption if, to shield. Yeah, if there's a combo other. you want, <laughs> it's definitely the redemption into these two minions, or one, you know, one of them either way. Ooh, there is a secret keeper for for Ties? Yes, that's, yes. Yep. that's for Ties. Powder has the redemption, knife juggler, and mini bot. I, hmm. Yeah, both of them have uh, actually a nice opening here. Yeah, I'm trying to work out whether the redemption on one of these two drops like beats the secret keeper but i think with the noble sacrifice we'll soak up the attack first from what the two drop from powder mm -hmm. then that because noble sacrifice is the secret that's played um he, he could be ahead here mm. okay so secret keeper and you do not play noble sacrifice this turn no you don't you need a coin for shredder i guess oh, oh. Oh, maybe you should have. <laughs> 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 Captain <Ooh>. Hindsight. Misplay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, no. It was, it was correct. Okay, this is... Hmm. Oh, oh my god, this is like super back of fun. Yeah, well, Nothing's happened yet, lot. but we're judging like so many turns ahead. So, so like... Knife Jugger into Noble Sacrifice sounds like a good idea, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Why not Haunted Creeper into Noble Sacrifice? You do have Knife Jugger in the next turn. So. Yeah, that's also another option. Mm. Just yeah. like... Because you don't gain anything from the juggle from Noble Sacrifice, right? If there was a one health minion on the board with Noble Sacrifice, mm -hmm. you can potentially juggle it down, so then you keep the 2-1. But because there's not, you don't actually gain too much. But, you know, there will be massive battle next turn drawn, so... Yeah, that's that's true. Having Nav Juggle ready on, on, on the board changes a lot. Yeah. In that situation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, love that. Um, so yeah. just hunt a creeper to prepare for a possible Nav Juggle on your side, where, where you're just So the real the question knife. is... Do you attack with this juggler if you're powder? Probably not. Really? You think, like, it's a tough one. Like, do you think you can afford not to? 
Well, Powder was the one who kept Noble Sacrifice uh, against Zoo. So if there is a secret, he should expect something mm. like Noble Sacrifice. It might be Redemption as well, right? He knows it's not a competitive spirit. That's what he knows. So he's playing around... What was he playing around? He's not playing around anything. He basically just uh, is playing around Knife Juggler, attacking into Hunter Creeper. Yeah, well, that kind of sucked. Yeah, Powder is visibly upset. Yeah, I think the idea is there is if it's Avenge... Then, then it the lands on the 2 free, right? Yeah, and, and then, then, he, then he can potentially juggle the 1-1s one -ones with the 2 minions. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, which is, li like I said, it, it's very difficult in this position when you're losing on board to not attack with the juggler because it's so powerful, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So to just pass that turn, then it's going to be rough. Oh, oh man. my god, uh, that Undertaker is just... Oh. Well, yeah, the Secret Keeper Lady <laughs> is like, this is my time to shine. Und it's on the lady. It's like, it, no, <laughs> well, that it, sounds bad. It's <laughs> a, it's a I was like, uh, I was so prepped for a joke then, but you, you did it yourself. It's a chill wind yeti. Cool. Okay. I mean, it is a chill wind yeti if he plays the secrets. I, I don't think he will play both of them. Yeah, I, I was working on whether Knife Juggler mm. and, and one of the secrets, probably the no second double sacrifice, because it can then trade one for one for the mini bot with a 50 50%. The, the only thing with Noble Sacrifice is you, you're potentially afraid of muster, although he didn't muster last turn, right? So yeah, maybe you're feeling a little bit, yeah, you're feeling a little bit safer. Had to be yeah, last yeah. turn if, if they didn't have it. Oh, and now. Uh, sorry, if he had it. Yeah, 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 if he had it. Now Tice is scratching the old head <laughs> thinking, hmm. Do I do what just like Powder just did there and like you know get get the worst well, end of the stick in front of an attack? You can't lose four tag. You need to check for it. Yeah. Well, he knows this is not noble sacrifice, right? Because uh, this is the this is the secret that was there before. So. Oh yeah, right. Ah, uh, second noble sacrifice and the fifty-fifty. Oh. No. Well, but it's work. still not horrible. But yeah, it's uh, imagine that it actually hit. That was yeah. such a huge swing. Powder in trouble, but actually on turn 5 he will be able to play one of the big 5 drops and then he has Mistress Challenger of his own. And uh, for now Tice is having a really nice board overall. So there's a lot of options right now, because you can think about do I buff my own uh, Secret Keeper by playing Avenge this turn and just go for the another Hunted Creeper, right? I really like this trade though, like, because he, he, this is, uh, you know, pushing him towards using the secret as opposed to dropping the shredder. So he will just mm -hmm, wants to creep mm -hmm. a secret now. And uh, killing this off, even redemption isn't so bad. He has to trade into it again, which is fine. But, you know, he keeps his secret keeper. And now I would be very surprised if this isn't creeper into Avenge now, just to, to bank on what he's got. Oh, well, what about I'm shredder? surprised that he didn't pop the uh, hundred creeper, you know? Because that was uh, looking like a good situation to get just the juggles out. It's playing around redemption a bit, um, not popping the the creeper here, and the, the knives will be a bit random. Hmm. So I, yeah, he could have popped it second though. Yeah. Right into the minibot and get juggled. Yeah, he yeah, could yeah, 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 have yeah, attacked yeah, into yeah, the yeah. minibot, but he decided that he wants to uh, have it unpopped for now. Oh, this is interesting. It's like... Ooh. Oh, man. <laughs> so the knife juggler says goodbye. Was that even worth though? Juggling, potentially juggling to a one... Like, yeah, I suppose he's guarding his juggler. I don't know, I think I would have just preferred the Avenge. Because imagine the situation is in now. You don't have a 1-1, one -one, but something else has plus... But uh, you could have played both. You get you check first for the juggles and see... And you see the outcomes and like... You wage what is better after that, right? If yeah. it's better to Avenge or not. Yeah, I'm not sure it's, it's a tough one. But, um, you know, he's going to continue to... He's used the Avenge now and we're probably going to see the Shredder go down. So, <laughs> this is this is the moment, though. Even, like, the Minibot's a, a great card. But now, Powder's, you know, starting to ramp into his big stuff. And Tice isn't, like, close, even close to it yet. As he doesn't have the Challenger, the Doctor Boom, or the Tyrion. Whereas Powder has low third, the Challenger, and Tyrion himself. Yeah, so. it's... it's that Tice didn't even deal that much damage to Powder, even though he has advantage from the very beginning of the game. Now, Mystery's Challenger bringing all the secrets. Uh, will be hard to deal with. Mm -hmm. yeah, he does have a, the one ones, right? Though, so it's very easy for him to proc the secrets. Oh, oh, okay. Well, the normal normal sacrifices, right? Yeah. Wow. Oh, of course. Yeah, he's used to. Yeah, but still, this changes oh, a lot. No, no, no. no. For for Tyson. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. This yeah, is yeah, getting so confusing with all the secrets yeah, yeah, yeah. that have been worry, played. <laughs> yeah, but still, it's a six six, and it brings avenge and competitive spirit. Yeah. So it's a great card, and you do have minions on board, or your opponent doesn't. And then 9 8. Oh, eight. wait, it's Repentance too, right? Or is it? Maybe it's an eye for an Sacred eye. Sacred trial. Should, should, be, should be Repentance. Suspense, the plot thickens. Oh my <laughs> Too God. many secrets. 
please bring eye of an eye, uh, eye for an eye. Someone will. What's kind of Someone. funny now is, is this is like revenge from Tice because it's like, oh, you have a big minion that's going to run into Noble Sacrifice? <laughs> that's not fun, is it? You know, and that's what happened to me last game, so... <laughs> And this is actually a, a dire straight for Powder. Like, what do you even do? You cannot attack, so this is blocking no, no, the attack. What are you talking about? That was almost Noble Sacrifices for, for, for Tyson. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. So he knows that there are none. Yeah, so he can trade off the 6-6. Six, six. But there will be Avenge Ooh. and uh, Redemption. Wait, why would you attack into... Okay, that, that was weird, right? So he probably thought about Noble Sacrifice. Did, did you just he, forget about the Noble Sacrifice? Yeah, side? apparently. He didn't count. But it's one of those things where you should just queue into something else anyway, right? Yeah. You, there's like it's what it's one of those things we discussed yesterday actually because I we think had something similar situation. happened yesterday yes, yes. where like there's almost no reason to attack into the bigger minion. It actually gains you. Nothing. Powder is just shaking his head. <laughs> He's like, "What am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing with my life?" Yeah, Maybe I think that was weird. He, he realized he he messed up pretty quick. There, there, hence there the were concede. like two big swings that could have been avoided, right? The first attack uh, with the knife juggler. Yeah. Into the hunted creeper because even if it went through, it wasn't ev uh, it wasn't really that convincing to do because that might have been an revenge. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Right. And then like, uh, well, now he has a yeti. So he missed damage. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And still has two one ones. And if I lose the juggles, then I really don't d didn't build up anything on the board, right? So yeah, it seems like this one noble sacrifice cheated him twice. So the fact that it was yeah, there for Yeah, he had like three <laughs> Noble Sacrifices, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Because like this one Noble Sacrifice really changed the game. He didn't play the minions. He didn't get those juggles, even though he could have played two minions here. But uh, how awesome is that we c we have those replays? I love them. Yeah, I love yeah, them. Like you were talking about the play, and then you can actually see it on the screen yeah, at the same that, time. That was actually the, the other thing. If that would have hit on the Divine Shield and just killed yeah, just the minion, oh, yeah, it's straight yeah. out. That would be such a huge swing, even when you think about the man investment, right? It's like one mana for two mana minion. When you think about it, it's twice the cost, right? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. And then, like, attack into Mistress Challenger. This is something we talked about yesterday, that uh, sometimes people play only one Noble Sacrifice. If the player forgets, he makes uh, this attack because he thinks, like, yeah, there is Noble Sacrifice. I will not connect with Mistress Challenger. And then... Whoops. <laughs> yeah. Now he has a six one. Uh -oh. Yeah, and, and this is where like th so this is the play now where the attacking, you know, he still would have been in trouble either way, I think. But the uh the attacking should have gone into the the one one because yeah. you saw so many secrets active, um and there's like there's no gain from killing the six six. You know what? First. Yeah. Like I, there's no gain. I think he should have attacked into Shredder. This was the Doomsayer Boys time. Might have been well we we saw that yesterday, right? Or day one. I think that was a game I wasn't casting. I saw that on the, the update video yeah. uh, from mm -hmm. what happened, and I wasn't casting that game. But I did see a Doomsday come out, and someone looked very upset. Yeah, that was... Who was that? My God, too many games. We had, like, was 30 it the, um, I think Arne. Was it the track style? Was it Arne? No. I think Arne, uh, there was the Paladin Paladin, and there was the Doomsday swing. I'm not sure, but we've seen one Doomsday that actually mattered a lot. Yeah. For, uh, okay, so now uh, they're 1-1, one, one, um, both winning with, with Paladin. <laughs> Uh, one Paladin eliminated, one Warlock Zoo eliminated. Powder looks so extremely I happy. I guess that Powder needs to queue up his Warlock right now, right? If that's a Zoo. If that's yeah. a Zoo. It well, it will have like a well, I'd be surprised. I, th I think he's just sticking to the, the Reno Demons because it worked so well for him. And it is difficult to say, like, you know, why not? The deck's been performing really well. But he didn't even play them on the one. He he played Reno without demons on day one with the combo, and then yeah. he switched to demons on day two. Yeah, he was telling me yesterday that he really likes the, the demon deck. It's the one he's played the most o oh, overall. Oh, it's actually warrior. So it's a patron. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so that's a good pick. Yeah, this it's gonna be really interesting though because you know if you go with how the matchups should you know like on paper work, then mm -hmm. the warriors should beat this deck, or like you know it's it's definitely got the slight edge I would say, um. But then like we're sort of presuming Tyus has control warrior. Because you presume Tice would lock it in against Secret yeah, Paladin true. from Powder. So then it's like, if, if Powder wins this game, then it's going to be Control Warrior versus Patron. And we saw that matchup, even though we saw Crane do really well and nearly nearly take that game. Yeah, it's still a really good matchup for It's really control. rough. For, yeah, it's rough for the Patron Warrior. And then it's how Powder's Warlock might face up versus the Control Warrior. So getting ahead of ourselves a little bit. Um, but definitely interesting to see how the last hero standing affects the, uh, the, the deck choices yeah. and the lineups. Talking about Crane, by the way, because I, I just thought about anything can happen, right? He was playing that card yesterday. This card will not be viable in the standard, because we lose all Murkai. Yep. Yep. It, well, yeah. It won't It won't be as powerful. 
Because you still keep all the Murlocs, right? No, do we lose all the Murlocs? No. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah Bl Bliz be... Blizzard have confirmed that any collector's cards, so like, I guess Tor and Chieftain as well. No! Or, or ETC, or ETC, yeah. 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 ETC, uh, why? Yeah, all the, all the collection. And Me Mechatalk, too. Yeah, and more, more importantly, Captain's Parrot. Hell yeah, right now! Uh, so I really wanted to play <laughs> that card more! So they're not going to be in standard. If anyone didn't know, they know now. That's a sad day. I think you can still play the deck even without Murkai. Maybe we'll Do get a new Murloc. Yeah, there'll, there'll be a new charge Murloc. We'll be fine. <laughs> 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 the new the, expansion the, the is Murlocs. Young Murkai. <laughs> young Murkai. Yeah. So he will gain half a attack Uncle of each Murloc. <laughs> Half an attack. Uh, that was actually a thing in, wo in World of Warcraft TCG. There were the form swords that had half an attack. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, that was something. Like <laughs> oh, wow. They got nerfed. <laughs> 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 okay, so we have a pretty good opening for Tice here. This is pretty nice. You have options um, and the Secret Keeper, which although won't be as crazy in this game as it would be in the, in the mirror, um, Secret Keeper is definitely a card that needs an answer because it can just snowball if you leave it alone. Absolutely, but it's still a tough matchup for Paladin. Like what you really want to achieve is just uh, curve out as as well as possible. Um, just have minions on board before the patrons show up. If the patrons show up, you need to kill them as fast as possible. Then uh, have Mystery Changer on six, Doctor Boom on seven, Tyrion on eight. If you don't get that, patron will just remove your board consistently. Uh, wh where you have Mystery Changer on empty board, it's a simple execute actually. Uh, with, with Whirlwind or whatever. So it's really tough. Like, Warrior has a lot of tools to deal with uh, whatever board you, you put. To be honest, I don't like the Hunted Creeper this turn. Because if it's played before Death Spite, and you would like, to ideally, to play it after, after it, yeah. right? So you don't lose the 1-1s one in this case. Yeah. And I think just going for the hero power instead, or maybe just going for the knife juggler. And yeah, I, I, if it, in all honesty, I think I would have just done juggler and, and secret keeper. Mm -hmm. Because you put so many threats on the board in the form of like you know the secret keeper and the juggler, yeah. it's difficult for the warrior to remove both. Well, this is kind of awkward. I guess you just None run the yeah. You both face run it in and then just sacrifice the secret keeper. Yeah, yeah. Right. Secret keeper is not needed. Like so. You have no secrets in hand, right? So that's the, that's worth less at the moment than Absolutely. the mini box. So and that's a good board. That. That's a good board for now. Um, and now death spite seems now really death spite's nice. gonna do some work. Kill the free four, I guess. Then you can attack into the Hunter's Creeper next turn, so it does die, and you kill the one ones yeah. popping out from it. So what Tyz needs is a cog hammer. Nope. Hmm. Hmm. Well. So maybe you can go with the juggler and uh, make it a, a different target. Yeah, you just sacrifice the juggler, because then the creeper tokens stay alive, right? Yeah. yeah I like that. So just juggler into shield and you go. This is really interesting. I. Why does Tyus hate Knife Juggler? That's he waits for the Master Battle? Yeah, that's extra damage as well. It's and like the, problem the, is if the it biggest burst from the Paladin. Yeah, almost true, possible. true. It's just interesting because, like, you know, uh, Juggler is notoriously bad versus patrons, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it's just interesting. You don't want to get it out quickly, cash yeah. in that damage early, um, and then go from there. Yeah, it's uh, just so two, three, two minions. Still good, right? You don't have to rely on his yeah, power. Yeah. Hmm, actually attacking into that uh, haunted people will not kill the small spiders. Okay, that was weird. So you're getting four spiders there, but you can play Unstable Ghoul. So in theory, like Paladin normally cannot buff minions that well. Uh, we've seen one Keeper of Uldoman already. I don't mind this play actually, because without a Blessing of Kings, there's only the 2-2 two -two minibot that survives. And yeah. you also guarantee a card draw, another card draw from the Acolyte. So you guarantee three cards, almost certainly. Um, and then the Acolyte still actually kills the 2-1 minibot afterwards. If yeah. it okay. trade. Yeah, so you're right. This you're is actually right. really nice. Like It doesn't it doesn't look good because you've just built the board up and not killed it. But the Ghoul actually does a hell of a lot of work. Oh my god, is he Juggler? Is he going to hit the Juggler though? Nope. Nope. Yeah, he needs to race, unfortunately I, for him. I don't know. Yeah, you need to race. Yeah. I think you need to race. The, the Tyrion though will be a huge difference, but he needs... I was just I was just worried about Doctor potentially Bomb. the uh, the acolyte going into juggler the whirlwind. Yeah, then you have Avenge still. But yeah, no, you won't. You won't. Oh, you're right. You're right because everything will die at the same time. Just yeah. if you trade it off, like your juggler's harder to kill, and there's still a minion to get Avenge from, right? But you can't really play around 
like every single secret, right? With, with the situation. Because it no, I wasn't even on about playing around the secret. I was just on about playing around whirlwind. Because the acolyte can do the one damage. Maybe to that's the mind game that ties it. Like, I'm aware that I will lose the board to the whirlwind, so I play around it by playing something different than avenge in this situation. So it yeah, probably true. might be redemption or yeah. noble sacrifice, right? Yeah. Well, Despite can deal with Knife Juggler here to limit the damage from possible uh, Master for Battle. Oh, is he going for 4-3 to uh, protect his uh, Armor Smith? That's yeah, that's, nice. that's way better. And also the juggles again on the Armor Smith can make yep. it awkward. So, um, oh, this is actually huge though. So I think this is going to be really difficult for Tice to end this game. Well, he, has a, he might have Ashbringer. Yeah, the Ashbr Ashbringer would be a huge swing. Yeah, I just think because he can get Dr. Boom down first and he has Executes, then he, Tyrion just isn't a thing, then he has Ghoul. Which will probably soak up an Ashbringer hit if you can clear the board with like the Boombots and the Armorsmith later. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I, 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 you know, don't get me wrong, like, how does on six health? So <laughs> he's not like safe, but I think this could get difficult because of uh, Dr. Boom coming down now. Yeah, but then you need to kill everything. So Are you can attack phase. Attack phase, kill everything, play Dr. Boom, and you're at six. So you are not afraid of dying. And then you can deal with uh, most of the things. And you actually, for Ashbringer, you have one unstable goal at least. So it's mm, and the owl was used, so probably yeah. would be out of range from the Ashbringer. Well, because <laughs> the thing is, he even has like inner rage execute if he wants to save the boom bots or something. Yeah, you know, like so, he he definitely has options. And after that, he has bow rage if he can stay alive to maybe cycle into something else. He goes for the low tip instead. So why low tip? You uh, play around bow rage probably right now, yeah. just to draw three cards. Is it so important? Because for one mana you can't really do anything. Uh, it's like just for the future turn. Like, is he playing Dread Corsairs maybe? You know, just to like maybe get some taunts. But uh, you oh. can't play the Dread Corsair right now. Uh, yeah, yeah, for, for, for next turn. I, I don't know actually, it's a tough... Uh, to I'm be honest, just I'm I feel like Dr. they didn't play the Dr. Boom. Yeah, it feels so so powerful. Yeah, because now you, you don't have a... Like, from the board at least, you don't have an easy way to deal with the Tyrion. And the Bombots would have been a huge swing. Yeah. Well, actually, uh, the thing is that w you can deal with the Tyrion overall from your hand. Yeah, but for, for Tice, it seems like it would have been a no-brainer to play the, the Tyrion, but it, w it would have been way worse to play a Tyrion into a Dr. Boom with, like, you know, no yeah. interaction at all. But if there is no Tyrion, if there is, um, like, what what spells can there be overall that you block with Lotha? Are there any specific spells? Uh, well, you, you just cleared the board, so Blessing of Kings yeah, is not a problem. Yeah, there's nothing, yeah. You just play around secrets and divine favor, possibly, but uh, and some palaces they play one of. Even if it's a divine favor, it's you play eight mana cards to, to draw three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cards. I would play that. Yeah, so yeah. It's <laughs> <laughs> especially when you're on so much health. Yeah, you're on twenty-five still, so that feels pretty safe. The inner rage is going to come down to uh, uh, prop the execute and leave the uh, low theb intact. But now he now. can't play that boom again. Yeah. He needs to play the ghoul. He actually can. Uh, because well, he, yeah, he can, but... But you, you can't. <laughs> um, <laughs> because what if something will, something unexpected will juggler. happen, dude? There's still another juggler ju left, ju right? Juggler or possible consecration. That yeah. would be it, I think. Yeah, because the, the, yeah. the weird thing here is, like, this, this would look exactly the same, except the Dr. Boom would be on the board right about now. Yeah, true. Which is which is what obviously we had the we had the eyes on. But on you would still well. have the low tip for upcoming turns. Yeah, that that's what I mean. Like I like the fact that Doctor Boom could look be here instead of low tip, and you still have low tip because Doctor Boom's still not on the board, and he does need to claw the damage. Well, but back. he'll have less cards, um, because he will not be able to battle rage at that specific point, and he was still looking maybe for a fast uh, patron finish, that didn't come. You don't need patron finish when you have Doctor Boom. Doctor Boom is better than yeah, Patron. Doctor Boom is just nuts. Yeah, I just think it's like I, I don't know. It's a tough one. Well, the, still, the battle uh, rage drew into cards that he's not really interested in anyway because he had a lot of cards and answers in his hand regardless. Well, still, he is still in a good position. Uh, he can easily get uh, out of this uh, ten damage range. So th th what he needs to do is just clear this board. Maybe set up lethal for next turn if possible. I think you need to see what uh, drops from Shredder first. Yeah, I mean, can he even play Dr. Boom this turn? I would like Whirlwind maybe and Execute on the on the Shredder and then try attacking to whatever drops. We see Cheeky Ape with the little comment, Doomsayer one time. 
We might actually see it. There are two Shredders on board, it's possible. <laughs> it's twice as possible than if there were one. Doctor Boom into Whirlwind. Well, Powder has to decide fast because the time is running out. Quick. And the... Uh, okay, he's just, just locked in the safe. Time. And if that's a Doom Slayer, that would be quite fun. Oh, oh that's oh! perfect! Nice. That's a 5 health burr. Or like heal 5 from your hero, kind of. I think it's as well already. Powder's been able to stack up enough armor to survive <laughs> another couple of Redemption. hits. Redemption. Oh, <laughs> Tice even laughs. <laughs> Tice is even like, uh, I, you know, just put out a little smile there like, oh, okay. Okay, secret paladin. You got this yeah. one. <laughs> you got me. Redemption hero power. You got this, dude. You will never die. Mm. For justice. Immortal dude. And now the problem is there's only two charges of this Ashbringer left. That's going to be using one. So um, how does suddenly just no way near getting killed. With that, with that taunt uh, dead, can we say that Powder survived barely? Oh, nice. Nice. First game today, Nims. That was good. Right? Nice and early. And now you just slam boom, right? Yep. Slam boom, hero power. Go. Nah, there's no way you don't pl you are not playing boom here. Yeah, you don't need to kill the wa one one, right? There's nothing. You're out of range of uh, blessing of kings anyway. Blessing of kings, if that's competitive spirit, and then it's uh, twelve attack. Is it's it? No, eleven. 11. Yeah, so, so you're still, still out good. with hero power, good. yeah. <laughs> and then you just win next turn, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's gonna man mode and just fire war axe face. <laughs> All in. Why would you need that? <laughs> <laughs> I like armor up here. There's actually nothing you die to in the deck, unless there's you know, unless there's some crazy, like avenging wrath or something. But it is. And even then, boom would soak up all the hits. It is Whoops. definitely nerve wracking, right? Like in a moment where you don't know if Paladin has it. Like is there Leroy? Like you do think about all those crazy options that Thais can put in his deck, especially because those are new decks. Divine favor into Leroy, blessing of might, blessing of might. <laughs> Suddenly. Oh my god. Whoops. For justice. Doomsayer. Doomsayer time. Nope. Oh no. Oh no, it's Does just even a more big damage. Tower. Yeah. It has a, it's a death rattle into a death rattle. The frog with the cigar. Now it's a boot. I know. Do you, guys <laughs> know the, do you guys know the flavor text of this card? It's actually hilarious. No. It, de it deals one damage when it croaks. Oh, that's pretty good. That's right? pretty clever. That's a good one. Okay, so uh, this means that Powder is 2-1 uh, versus Tice, and Tice is left with the war uh, war Warlock? No, Warlock was Zoo. Warrior. 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 The warrior. It might be a Contra Warrior yeah. to counter the Patron, but then we don't know what kind of uh, Warlock is Powder playing, so it might be either Zoo. Well, no, he would still queue up Patron into the uh, into the Secret Palace. Yeah, I think right? so. Just it might be Zoo, it might be Rian Jackson Warlock, it might be even Maligos, who knows? Yeah, I mean, I'm not counting Wait, him. Wait, Ma Ma Malaga's Warrior? <laughs> no, Malaga's Warlock. Oh, yeah, from Powder. Uh, actually, yeah. Malaga's Warlock is something that uh, has been played in Swiss. We haven't seen it in, uh, uh, in the streamed matches, but uh, this is a deck that was actually viable. And I, I think Arne was uh, the one playing it. Uh, he was playing it in the Swiss. He was actually playing it here on, uh, on the, in the streamed matches as well, but he didn't need it because he won without using it even. Yeah, yep. the, f the flashy deck where yeah. it's like, I've got it, but I don't need to play it. I would like to see some Malay lock today. Yeah, this this was a really there. cool turn, by the way, with the girl. I really like this because yeah. you're not really punished by anything. The worst things like blessing of kings and a minion survives, and you're like, or yeah, silence, yeah. right? Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it, it was a cool turn, and um, it almost managed to win single handed the game because he cleaned yeah. up so much damage with that single unstable goal. Yeah, and the the acolyte drawing three cards as well. You are v very happy when acolyte does that. Yeah, man. So. Um, Curious, what does this warrior deck? What he did? Uh, Tice told me he brought something new, and w what was he playing before? Like yester uh, yesterday? Mm. Patron, I think patron. I think it was patron. Yeah. yeah. Or druid. Was no, he, he didn't. Druid? He didn't play druid yesterday. He didn't play druid. I think he played it on on Swiss. I think. But which which that was something I was going to come out on earlier as well. Like kind of weird to see Tice not bring druid to a tournament. Yeah, that's true. Because he's one of the decks. Sometimes he, happens. Yeah, it's one of the decks he's just really known for. But uh, maybe you know being too predictable and you know th thinking that everyone's going to bring druid, so everyone's prepped for it. Well, you don't want to face that many druid mirrors as well. Even though Tice probably knows exactly how to play druid mirrors. They get those wild groves in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on, they are actually fun if uh, if both players get bad hands. And then you really have to think, like, when to trade and what to do. Yeah, it's like an 
slow arena. <laughs> yeah. <it's, laughs> Play many in a turn and hope. Instead of going into <laughs> Secret Keeper and Secrets, you, you do a lot of trading. Just you know. instead of Yetis, you have Pile to Shredders. Yeah, pretty much. Unless you have a really <laughs> good arena and you have Shredders anyway. Yeah, I'm really not not sad about the fact that we'll not see Pile to Shredders soon. Yeah, I think they, it creates some like fun moments. But I think just the lack of other four drops being a thing is yeah. more frustrating to me. Yeah, the yeah. only four drops, other four drops that are being played right now are in Paladin and Warlock if you play Void Color. And basically. Rogue with Tomb Pillager. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's actually entered the game as well. So there's two shield blocks and a bash. So Slam bash, Contra Warrior? Yeah. It looks like a Contra Warrior to me. I hope it's the, the, the Elise Control Warrior. That'd be cool. What about Fibonacci one? With uh, tournament, tournament medic, medic. Yeah. with everything, and uh, Deathwing, it just, please. It just runs everything. Can we see Deathwing at least once? Ooh, that's a good card to start. Okay, so we decide, we decided, and Ty's decided that this is a bad matchup for Patron because Contra Warrior. We've seen it before. Uh, basically, what they try to do, like First Powder, doesn't know exactly that this is a Contra Warrior, but he probably. Assumes this is a Contra Warrior because uh, Tice you, didn't take yeah. it before. Yep. And um, now the matchup is good because uh, Contra Warrior has a lot of tools to deal with the er early aggression from the patrons. And then he has an amazing tool versus patrons in form of Brawl. And also Harrison Jones for the possible weapons. Yeah, and also because um, it has the ability to get out of range because there's no like crazy burst combos from uh, Patron Warrior anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, you can actually hit the point, especially if you get True Heart down. Speaking of which, um, you can get to the point where you have so much armor that you know it's not even like two turn lethal. You you know like you've got so many turns to be able to deal with the board, um, and we can see now it's even tech. So like you know Harrison's gonna do some amazing work versus the Patron Warrior. Yeah, but that doesn't look like good for Tice right now. He, he wanted to play his Acolyte of Pain on turn three, but the other Acolyte of Pain from the other side of the board is kind of messing up with his uh, with his idea of how to approach this this turn, right? Yeah. Uh, Lothar, can you take us through how do you win this match as patron? Like, what is the, the key thing you need to do? To make it super simple, in one sentence, you want to play patrons as soon as possible and multiply them and just hope your opponent doesn't have brawl because no. then you overwhelm him with the amount of bodies on, and that's about it. But if that's not the case, then the other plan is just to go with the Throating Berserkers, deal insane amount of damage if your opponent doesn't have it execute. And as you can hear from what I'm saying is that you rely on, on the your warrior opponent having bad not cards. having yeah, yeah you rely Mostly, on, yeah. on on your opponent having bad opening hand. Yeah, so like for, for example, as this board is built up now with the you know you see the frothing berserker come down, the board starts getting to a point, especially if this berserker survives one more turn, where there's a chance sometimes where you can force the control warrior to use a brawl on a board that isn't patrons, and then your patrons are safer. But then that just relies on them not having removal to remove mm -hmm. your, your mm -hmm. non-patron board down. So again, it really does rely on the control warrior sort of whiffing its draws. Sometimes you can even um, catch control warrior with your Grommash in a rage, in a rage maybe, or like even with one, just to deal yeah. the final amounts of damage. Because Grommash with uh, even the death spite is basically 14 points of damage out of nowhere. So just pressure them. Standard. Yeah. Just get deal as much damage as possible with the smaller minions and then put your bigger combos on board. Luckily for Tice, he got the weapon to deal with the Frothing Berserker because without that weapon, it could have been bleak for him. Yeah. He had. Uh, was it possible to shield slam? I don't think so because he was on 30 health and okay. no armor, I think. so. Well, he could shield slam, but it wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> just it wouldn't, it would damage. just buff the Frothing Berserker. So wow. <laughs> so, yeah, thanks, bro. Okay, execute Acolyte of Pain to deny the card draw, kill the armor smith, play Sludge Belcher. Yeah, I think that's fine. Sludge Belcher lines up pretty well versus Shredder, right? So um The problem is if your opponent has a way of clearing the Belcher, then you don't have a way to kill the Palter Shredder's next turn. Right? Because it's you fine, you just drop the Belcher. Belcher. Yeah, <laughs> just another Belcher. Then your opponent finds another way to kill the Belcher. And then and you like drop Sylvanas. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, I will have your Shredder. Then and Shredder in the does. meantime is like, yeah, I'll dealt 16 damage. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty done my job today. <laughs> yep. I think it's really big, though, that um, that Powder doesn't actually have a weapon. Oh, he doesn't have a Death Spike. Yep. So um, it, all, all this is doing is signifying to Tice, like, yep, I've not got Brawl, but you've not got Patrons. Like, oh, you've not got a good Patron turn. So Tice goes instead for the Sylvanas. And I like that, too, because... Actually, do I like it? Well, if he went for Sylvanas, uh, both minions would get run into Sylvanas probably, and then he steals whatever comes out of the Shredder. 
Yeah, he actually went for the Belcher. Hmm. Uh, okay, kept, I'm quite surprised. Kept then. Execute. Well, the thing is with, with Execute, if you execute uh, Acolyte of Pain, you might lack Execute for Dr. Boom, Gromash. Uh, what else is there? Like a second big frothing behind the Taunt. So you might still find the Execute targets. And this Shred is going to stay alive one more turn. Yep. It's unkillable. Who's the pilot, though? Is it the Doomsayer? <laughs> Probably. Probably. And it's going to appear on a turn with public patrons. One damage to face. So much pressure. Still, there's a piloted Shredder. Is he weighing up? Um, attacking in, in a rage and then use the Shredder for face? Yeah, actually, that might be interesting. Um, that's more damage, and you actually end up with two minions with more attack and a weapon as well. And you're the one that has the oh, pressure. Actually, is it... Is it better to enrage the armor smith? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, not not enrage the armor smith. Yeah, increase the attack. So yeah, 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 it's way better. Yeah, I like this. You just push as much as you can at this point. He doesn't have patrons. Doesn't have anything really at this point. Just to go dr potentially drop a berserker and push some more damage with the cool task mask the, uh, next turn. So uh, I like this. You just pressure down and hope you draw a grom, I guess. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm so this turn execute <laughs> is like no. I, I don't know. It's like Belcher feels again. like the coin. Decreases in value because he could have used it to gain tempo, right? On turn four or five. And it seems like Tyson is reluctant to use it. I would really love to see the coin used this turn. Either to drop Sylvanas on board and just to add something, like, you know, just threatening your opponent. Because if he trades, you get the drop from the Parter Shredder. If you yeah. execute the Armor Smith, sounds bad, right? But it, that was an investment from the Patron Warrior just to play the Inner Rage on the Armor Smith. So it's like still two for one. Yeah. So it's not that horrible, right? Yeah, Sylvanas would be awkward. Like even if you get uh, ten damage to face and beat beat nine, Sylvanas can steal no probably whatever you want because you have ways uh, with the Shield Sun to, to kill your own Sylvanas afterwards. I really feel like you need to play the Execute just to. Uh, get out the damage in your way. Yeah, because I think if, if you don't execute this minion, your opponent will be like, Yeah, I just ignore this Sylvanas, so I'll just go face and just deal the damage. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. And now, in this situation, he might actually think about trading first and then develop the board. There's Grom, though, so that's definitely interesting. So he can either Grom for 10 on turn 9 uh, or Grom for 12 uh, with the Cruel Taskmaster on turn 10. So I definitely think there's a point in trying to just set up as much damage as possible. Yeah. Hmm, so what's he looking to draw into here? Wait, what? Uh, whatever. I mean, like, he cannot deal with Savannah's really, and he doesn't want to give Minion. And because he has the Grom... I uh, just thought he was going to Cruel Task onto the Shredder just to push more damage, and then Grom will win next turn. Oh. Uh, the, the turn after. Yeah, yeah. yeah like that was he, interesting. He cannot do it on the next turn, so he's, like, pushing with damage as much as possible. He knows he's losing the long, ga long game. Like, this is his win of opportunity to just win with the Grom Ash. So there's a way to steal the Acolyte of Pain or the Shredder. Because you can... It depends what Tice wants to do. It's also an option to... There's also an option to just kill the weapon. No, that makes no sense. So it's better to just bash something, use double shield slams, and you either get the pile to Shredder or the Acolyte of Pain if you value the, the card Let before your opponent survive. more. Or you could Harrison and draw two cards. I think like bash armor up and shield slam is is definitely fine. You're getting yeah. five armor and you're getting the, sh uh, the shredder, so. So now you use bash. On the bash two the two, two, two and then shield two? slam. Yes. Yeah, and armor up, shield slam, slam Savannah's. That's pretty good. Like you dismantle the board and you will have the hearts and Jones for the next turn if needed, or even just uh, just eager two heart for the next turn to get uh, four armor and start slowly escape. Yeah, I think I think you'll probably favor true heart because true heart gives him more armor than the weapon's going to attack with in the next turn anyway. Um, and he doesn't particularly need card draw, is he? You know, at, at quite at the moment, I think he values the armor much much more. Um, well, Frodding Berserker and Sludge Belcher are pretty nice, free attack to face, and the Powder just continuing to setting up that lethal with Gromash. If uh, if Chokhar is being played, that will be, what, 16, 18 uh, health, and then Gromash, Whirlwind is 13, and the weapon attack at 13 if... Um, this is a tough situation, like, Tice can just die next turn. Well, he got the shield block, fortunately for him. But then he'll have to play sh a Belcher? No, it or destroy the weapon? Belcher, armor up, shield slam, defrauding berserker. Yeah. Because that's, like, super safe just in to die to, like, some awkward wind effects, and that's about it, right? You, you can attack even with the, the Palta Shredder into the Belcher this turn, just to deal the damage and maybe get a taunt 
maybe get a light well. Yeah, and also the the other belcher dies if it trades into your belcher there, so yeah, they might do the trade for you. So I, I like this play as well. So now Grimash cannot connect to face because there will be a one to slash token. I like that the face played first the belcher. Oh. oh. Nice. But I like how he played first the Belcher before dropping the Palta Shredder because if that will be a Mana Rav... Yeah, done. Done. Yeah. You're like, uh-oh. Yeah, if there's I, a Doomsayer, <laughs> you're fine, probably, because yeah. you, you get the one yeah. too, at least. Every, and everyone really focuses on Doomsayer as it's probably like the most you know, m impactful card mm -hmm. that can come out mm -hmm. of it, but definitely cards like Mana Rav you have to think about because otherwise, like you said, you're just not playing the Belcher anymore and that's uh, you know, blown your turn. But this seems like a, a patron turn? Do you want to risk it? I mean, you probably when you you going so. There are only four cards in hand, so. I think Patron Whirlwind Girl is fine because you still save a Whirlwind for Grom. Just yeah. Like to that you need to keep a, a that one Whirlwind yeah. for the Grom. Right? Okay, makes sense, and uh, this is a nice board overall. Hmm. Because also to a certain extent, Brawl will can still leave a Patron alive potentially, uh, and also. It removes his board on the other side, so these taunts go away as well. Uh, or he trades them in. So then, uh, you know, he does have Grom as the, the push for some damage. He has nothing else yet. So if he draws like a Death Bite, then the Brawl might even just clear up the taunts for him. Yeah, mm -hmm. but this now really favors Thais because uh, he, he, he can does gain armor. He can gain armor, yeah. Even though there are patrons and there will be, will, will be more patrons in the upcoming turns, he can still draw cards with the shield blocks. He can respond to the weapon. But, but the, the weapon doesn't really matter. At this point, if you, if um, Pardo will, will play a weapon, he will just most likely win by its straight damaging his opponent. So. Well, actually, if he sets up um, Death Spite to have uh, Whirlwind Effect for Gromash, Harrison can be uh, can can catch him off guard there. This would be quite nice. Um, executing one of the patrons. Nah, I don't good. see a point. You need to keep that executed if you draw a brawl and you get a damaged minion after the brawl. Ooh. Well, you need to play that anyway. Well, if you like, you don't have the brawl yet. So it's probably easier to deal with two patrons on board than four patrons. So it's like this execute is basically dealing with two patrons at the same time. Okay, good point. Especially because there is no brawl in his hand and he doesn't have uh, more draw possibilities. I, th I think a big, a big point to that as well is he, with what's on board, he can't prop the ghoul that we can see. Yeah. So the ghoul won't die this turn, so there's a big chance that there's still only one patron next turn for Ty's to try and deal with. Well, the patron can attack into one. one. Oh, yeah, so it's, sorry, two. Sorry, two. Yeah, yeah. yeah, two versus four. Yeah, but overall, absolutely. Do you invest in Grom this turn and just deal push for the damage? You, you've just seen an execute, but so maybe why not? If your opponent will top take a brawl, yeah, you, you lose. Yeah. Well, or Grom wins the brawl and then you just carry on hitting face. You're still in a weird situation Ooh. where um, this is such so funny actually. One player like Thais just uh, absolutely got uh, through the for the health total. He has he is at 30 plus, so he, he denied what Powder was doing in the beginning of the game. But Powder somehow found found the patron turns where there is uh, no brawl for Thais. Oh man! And now with the battle rage. Well, do you want to risk it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess. It is a lot of damage. Oh, I want a death by as well. For next turn, I'm going to low tap. Low tap is pretty key. Yeah. Did you think... Hmm. Attacking into with the goal into True Heart? And yeah, then and then Battle Rage off that instead, and then leave Grom. Yeah, I wouldn't hate that. I um, think though, like like you mentioned, Lothal. Oh. Wow. Okay, but there's a problem. But you can't really play around it. If the Patron lives, it gets duplicated. Because yeah, uh, the, the, the frog, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> but if Grumash survives, then you pick him up. Yeah, so that would be pretty good. If Ghoul survives, you're also happy about that. Mm -hmm. Is it? Yeah, I was thinking if there's any reason you would BGH first. No, uh, the chances are still the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't Actually, really work any better. Do you really have to brawl this turn? Maybe you just BGH armor up, and then you just. Uh, Allow your opponent, like this is set 7 power on board only, and you are at 18, you will be at 22. So we just allow the patron stats oh, back. Oh, the okay. cool list. Yeah, wow. Well, this is obviously better if this is the outcome. Grom, anyone? Is it better? Because 
You would rather have a minion of your own on the board without the, the chance. Oh, yeah, obviously. But then, like, the outcome was that Patron could survive, right? But I also think... This, like is, this is why. This is why you wanted the big game hunter on your own board to kill the Grom. Yeah. The, best, the best outcome was the Grom to live. Yeah, obviously. But then, like, I, I, f I thought, like, maybe just leaving them alive for one turn would be fine as well. So you... So... You play Lothep here, right? Yeah. Or do you think it's worth risking Patron? No, I, it, I don't think it's worth it. I, I don't know how many weapons are left for, for the Control Warrior. Because if there's a weapon and it kills the Ghoul... What if it's there as a Bash? Yeah, that's true. Slam, even? Like he's I think the Lothep is just slam. a safer play Oh, here, look right? at that, yeah. That but for this is devastating for Powder because he uses two Whirling Effects yeah. now. But you can't really predict that. It's like uh, the, the yeah, Lothep was tough, a better yeah. play this turn. I think so, at least. Yeah. Well, but this means You can big game hunt to that. It was just tough. Look at that. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Tempo. And now suddenly born. And he has only a solitary patron without the the facts and armor smith. Well, what a game. It's like back and forth. This matchup shouldn't be this close. Yeah, like it shouldn't be, but Kais had a really old bad open. Yeah. He was what rescued, the Patreon Mario needs to do to win. Yeah, <laughs> that was the, the whole point of, of the question that Nimsh asked me, right? Yeah. It, you, ca you take the advantage as being the Patreon Warrior of your opponent having a really bad opening hand. But that's about it. For a second, I thought that's the powder with the Dr. Boone. I was like, oh. <laughs> and it's turned around again. <laughs> yeah, but it only shows like how good this matchup is for Contra Warrior. Even with, with a bad opening, like the game seems close. But still, it's really... Not that close. Like right now, this is mostly over for Powder. For um, it could have been different for Powder if you played the Patron instead of the Lotep, yeah. but it seems so much better to play the Lotep. Right? Well, yeah. Yeah. He can wait no longer. I was thinking of what actually is left in the deck. Cause he's seen two Shield Slams and a Bash, right? So was there only a Bash that punished the Patron? Second Brawl. Second Brawl. I'm uh, sure that you're gonna, you're gonna brawl a Ghoul brawl. and a Patron. Revenge, possibly. Which is actually active as well. Yeah. So second ghoul. And for ties, what can he do? We can he can actually play the Doctor Boom first before popping the 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 ghoul. Uh, right? He can just uh, pop the ghoul right now and kill the patrons and then play Doctor Boom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's always time. <laughs> <You know>. Sure. <laughs> and it's like patron has no more tools. Doctor Boom is a possible card that he can get. Yeah, do we just see? Yeah, there, there's no brawl. In yeah, the I'm just thinking, like, is, is there just a, a concede at this point? Back yeah, at 25. Two versus two. For now, it's it's a draw between those players, and it, the last game will decide it. will Tice advance or Powder will advance to the top four of the PGL Spring Tower Powder, players. Powder would probably would really like to have the zoo as the last deck, but if that's the Demon uh, Reno Lock, how does that matchup look, look like, Raven? Uh, it's a real tough one. It's very similar to the um, to any sort of heavy control matchups, and it's all about getting the most out of your cards, like really utilizing the tools you've got. So Tice will have to use his removal, like just just the right amount, and not like overcommit. The second he does like a brawl on like a very mediocre board, it could be disastrous because then you already lose one of your big board clearing tools. And uh, when there's so many big minions in a in Powder's Warlock, if that's the Warlock he's running, because mm -hmm. he's running all the big demons and not the combo then, you know, that could be disastrous if you let those things live. Those moments. The, the opening was so funny, like, both having Acolyte of Pain and, and just drink cards because there were no, no early weapons. It's like a gentleman's agreement. Should we just draw loads of cards and then play? <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> just give ourselves a better chance and give the viewers a better show. Yeah. And they're definitely doing it, 2-2. Two, two. So yeah, It's going to go down to the final game. I expect nothing less from these guys. Yeah, this match is really, really cool to watch. Um, even though like they they have been playing Secret Paladins, we, we did have those swing, swing turns as well. And that Shredder just didn't die <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. for so long. He, and he, and he you know, yeah, played he for both sides. He actually dealt damage, I think. <laughs> yeah, what, to, to both people? Y yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. Well, Goblin technology is not that uh, bad, if you think about it. It's slightly unreliable. But not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Might be a bit random, but still. Okay, so uh, Warrior versus the Warlock. And uh, Powder, he did brought uh, combo Reno Lock for the first day. He wasn't super happy about it. He changed things up a bit. And he was playing the Demon hand, uh, demon Reno Lock with Malganis and uh, Infernal. 
So interesting uh, choices there. I wonder if he he mixed it up a lot, and everybody is um, expecting Powder to actually mix things up. Like he's the one who can change lineups, and it happened in the past. Like if when Powder w had a chance to change the lineup, he changed all the decks before. Yeah, yeah it's, def it's definitely good. It makes him very unpredictable. Because uh, even if you predict he's going to change his lineup, well, there's always a chance he might not, and you know, mind game that way. Or even though if he changes the whole lineup, then what's he bringing? You know, like it's really difficult. But um, yeah, I kind of hope this is the demon lock, uh, the demon Reno lock from Powder, just because it's a cool deck. And to see that versus Control Warrior, although it might take a while, guys, like it's going to be a really fun match. That turn was quite interesting, but he was playing around Brawl there, so he had an opportunity to draw more cards with the Battle Rage. Yeah, but this this was exactly multiply patrons. Yeah, if this if this is getting hit by Brawl and and the patron survives, it's exactly as Lothar said. Then Asebugu just procs, and you have two patrons. I mean, yeah. he was not playing around Brawl because he knew that there's no Brawl. Yeah, because it, it would have, it would have been used the last turn. Yeah, it was it was that previous turn that was like I think had the most impact on the game. Yeah. The Lothab versus the patron, because we can see that if the patron went down, there was very little he could. You know, like Tys could actually deal with that. You know, he just used Brawl, um, and the Ghoul was still on the board. So, um, you know, the Lothab felt like the more like steady play and the more reliable play. Um, patron being a bit more risky, but we can see that the patron actually would have paid off. Well, with those two patrons, if you don't play around Brawl, you probably just do not keep Ghoul on on board, and you just stack with the Ghoul into Justice or True Hard. You get more patrons, and then you you battle rage after that. But yeah. like, if you keep two patrons and a stable Ghoul on board. And go with the Grimash. Um, you play around the a Brawl top deck, possibly. Yeah, you, you push for damage, and also you just rely on the Ghoul being a taunt, right? Yeah, and, yeah. and you've seen so much removal already. Then if there's a weapon removal, well, it has to hit the Ghoul, and that's going to make the patrons for you. So, and on top of that, he had Grimash down. So. Yeah, but it seems like in the beginning, Powder was uh, not in the A form. Uh, he was shaking his head a lot. He wasn't uh, happy with his uh, his plays. He, well, I think he missed double 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 noble sacrifice in the mm -hmm. Paladin game as well. Yeah, I think that was and that was right at the end, right? And he went straight. Into this game, so. yeah. but he 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 basically upped his game right yeah. now. Yeah, right now he's playing on point. This, um, in this round, and uh, the only thing that could have been done differently and probably would have won the him, him the game was the low tap instead of the yeah. patron. Uh, sorry, uh, the, the patron, patron instead of the, the, the low tap. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it was a really hard turn to take. It's like, hmm, should I play around the removal so right now and just get steady damage on the board? Or should I go for the really risky route with Patreon? It's a high risk, high reward, be, right? Yeah, and, and just get punished for it. Yeah. It's really, really dependent on the, what you want to achieve. This looks like Reno. Yeah, it looks like Reno lock, but we don't know which version yet. Is the combo version? Is the demon version? Uh, those are cards that are in every Reno deck. Yeah. I, I guess the combo version is less powerful against the Warlock. Uh, sorry, against the Warrior, warrior because it yeah. can just. Armor up, right? Yeah, it's kind of like branch. like playing a rogue versus warrior. So just to control hard, and you didn't sit on 60 damage. Warriors at 30 health, and you don't know what to do. Yeah, <laughs> it's like oh, arcane golem face, go. Um, yeah. So um, I from I was talking to Paddy yesterday, and he said he actually he's played the demon variant the most. He likes it the most. So I'd be surprised if he didn't bring it again. Uh, maybe expecting certain things from Tice. I'm not sure. It, it did work on day two, and uh, there is a lot of power because it, Reno Lock sometimes lacks the minions. The, the previous version had Stalag and Fugan, which was providing a lot of power in turn five and a passable Thaddeus that has to be dealt with. But then the combo version is uh, mostly based on spells. And uh, if you just are forced to play Arcing Golem to attack face or like to trade into a minion, it's, it doesn't seem that yeah. good. Well, the thing is as well, like the, the combo Reno has like a very specific win condition. Sometimes you can just win, you know, like, and that's just the way the game goes. But yeah. you, you are quite reliant on that combo in so, some way or another, even if it's not with power overwhelming and it's just like, you know, a burst to eight or something with Arcing Golem faceless or something like that, or maybe a double power, power overwhelming from a peddler. Um, so you definitely heavily relying on that, but if he taps, there's the Malganis, so that's very much looking like it's his uh, his demon arena lock from yesterday, mm -hmm. which I like. I wish I think it's going to be much better in this matchup. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it seems like um, it will be similar to Handlock versus Warrior, where Handlock had an advantage because you have those big minions like uh, Twilight Drake, you have Void Caller, you have Malganis, Jaraxxus. Jaraxxus itself just providing you with the steady flow of Infernals is also pretty nice. Yeah, Jaraxxus is, is definitely a card that can win this matchup for the Warlock. Um, if you can get it off safely though, because um, something we saw I think in the American prelims was there was a Jaraxxus that was played and uh, it 
which wasn't playing around because there was a death spite already in hand wasn't mm -hmm. playing around grom and like yeah. you definitely need to play the draxus when you know you can survive at least one turn and then use the uh, the infernals and then maybe some taunt givers to just really secure the board i'm quite surprised that Thais would like to pick up the weapon right now i know that he has two of them but wouldn't you like just to develop the the Belcher this turn and just kill the the opponent minion with with shield slam to conceal the fact that you have the weapon at all? Hmm. It's, a, it's a tough one as well because you you have to use the coin right, and then your next turn doesn't feel too great either. So you ne you turn five with five mana after you've played Belcher. Yeah, I, I I think I like it because you have a clear kill on the Twilight Drake, and then you have the coin for a possible turn six shield maiden into shield slam. To gain, to gain a lot of tempo and stop Warlock. Hmm. It's going to be interesting though, whether he chooses to attack in or whether he could potentially drop Sylvanas on the board or, you know, th th there's a few options there because attacking in gives your opponent, you know, the additional token from the Imgang boss as Sylvanas well. Sylvanas is just too big of an MVP in this game to just throw it, throw it out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's an option, but definitely not the best one. I'd say. Belcher is really nice here, and especially because you put the Imgang boss on free health as well. So attack and then play Belcher. Yeah. And you, like you said, you hold on to that coin. Hmm. Well, Shoots Maiden that needs to be played on turn 6. As you said, the coin, the Shoot Slam. So the only options they've got is Belcher right now. Yep. And already having Brawl versus this Demon Reno is actually really important. I, I wonder if he plays 2 or 1. Yeah, we only saw one last game, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. And even that took a while. <laughs> so <laughs> exactly. Tys is probably happy that this brawl's in the deck, like, it, well, in his hand, should I say, um, uh, quite early on, because I feel like it's going to be very useful. All right. So um, from Powder's perspective, you just want to establish a board and keep pushing. So yep. A very similar situation to the patron game, when you just need to bank on your opponent doesn't not having removals, right? Yep. And you just push him for damage and like that. Or just even exhaust the removal, right? So like just play your minions and um, survive all the bashes and slams and at some point Warrior might run out of cards and be like we've seen that last game as well. Like, at some point Warrior has like three to four cards in hand and that mostly like cards like Gromash, um, endgame cards, and you just continue with a steady flow of minions. Because you have the hero power, you have life tap, you can draw more cards than the warrior. Yeah, and, and th that was a nice turn from Powder as well, using the Demon Wrath effectively as just two damage to the Belcher. Um, because it just shows the knowledge of the matchup, where like, you're not going to pull off a big de a big Demon Wrath versus Control yeah. Warrior, right? Probably like, not. Yeah, Even if, like, there will be an armor smith on yeah, the board. Yeah, exactly, and, like, and you're like, no! Heal for 10! <laughs> it's like, yeah, so... um. Uh, yeah, that, that was really nice there, just utilize it. And that's what this t type of deck is about. Utilizing every card you've got in the best possible way. Oh man, this turn is so awkward. <laughs> Three, six, nine cards. Well, if you tap, you need to play a card. So I guess this is the tap and heal bot turn. Yeah, because you, you'd sort of draw the weapon towards the heal bot there whilst guarding, you know, like low theft for next yep. turn. While still cycling and keeping your health total pretty high as well, so... I, I like that. There's, there's almost there's just like no point playing Lothar. Yeah, yeah, obviously. You would love to play Lothar, but you can't cannot just uh, throw it away. Or if you've been watching the show match yesterday, maybe he's weighing up Siphon Soul his own minion to heal no. for, that, <laughs> for that long fatigue game. Peddler, can Peddler change things? Like if you get Voidwalker. Voidwalker would be nice. Dragon Egg? I am I'm, I'm just looking at corruption. I like Dragon Egg. Dragon Egg provides you with a two one. And it either protects the, the Peddler, it definitely protects the Peddler because you have to attack into Dragon Egg. Ah, there's the second Brawl, so not too much of a surprise, but just weird that yeah. we didn't see. We, we saw one Brawl so late and then we didn't see the second one at all in the last game. It, it did go on for a while. was quite unlucky for, by, for, for, for that he not didn't getting get the Brawl, the brawl yeah, for like I mean, quite a time. When you play that matchup up. as the Patron, if you get Patrons turn 5, you expect Brawl next turn. You, yeah. you know, you, ju you just expect it. Because they, they normally run too. Absolutely. Uh, is, is it Dr. Boom time this turn? You definitely do not cast Brawl on this board, like there's nothing in it and you kill it easily. Uh, if you get Dr. Boom after that, it seems fine. Like it's uh, much stronger than Sylvanas or Shield Maiden at the moment. Looks like so. Yeah, I don't think you're expecting too much pressure. And um depends what Tyce's call is actually on him. Um whether he thinks this is burst or not from uh, from powder, because there's nothing that re that's really lent. Because we've not seen void callers, 
The only demon we've seen is Gang Boss, which is standard in almost every single Warlock deck ever. Yep. So uh, he's not seen anything to tell him either way, actually. So, the, you know, I think Boom is just a solid play here, but we might see him maybe play a bit more defensive until he sees these demons. It's actually so scary because you will never know which version of the Reno Log it is before it's too late. Yeah. I mean, if a Void Caller came out, you've got a pretty good idea. But we've not seen those yet. But yeah, we, if it was combo, then there's definitely a chance to... Like, imagine Emperor this turn. That would be so scary for Tyus. Yeah, it's just like, you no could just die. Yeah, you could just die. Three. And another uh, damage. This is really nice, though. So he has Reno in hand, so he's feeling pretty safe. Yeah, uh, it doesn't really matter how much damage was it. It's not like you're expecting Grom in a Rage in a Rage. And <laughs> exactly. And, and, and even yeah. if you were, that's still not enough <laughs> on 15, so... Uh, this board. It's annoying. This is kind of awful. I think you just have to shield Maiden. Shield Maiden, shield slam the 4 2. Sure. And again, this what the coin now? has such a low value. Yeah. It's almost like, especially in Control Warrior as well, like there's there's not much you can squeeze out with one additional mana late in the game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, but overall, I think with the coin warrior, is that it's not about using your coin effectively. It's more about using your removal effectively. So like, if you can use your coin to accelerate some removal card, what? great. But no. if you don't, it's like fine because it's all about mm -hmm. like how much value you gain uh, with the removal cards you're using. Yeah, this is kind of awkward though. I think the shield slam has to come out because the problem is. There's a lot of damage on the board, and it, you know I understand uh, holding on to removal for the big threats, but you know you kind of need to deal with the board as well because this is what four, five, seven damage when you're on 18. Like you could just die with like a you know like PO or you know something from Peddler. Oh, hang on. Hmm. I mean, I'm I'm just looking at Malganis to bank in this damage. Right, right. Be it's because if he steals it with Sylvanas, you have Siphon Soul. Yeah, but uh, you might you you might not uh, have room to do it still. Um, I don't. I don't know. Like, I just think like <laughs> it's tough because how at this point and looking at his hand, like how's Malganis going to come out on this game and have much of an I impact? Would not, I oh, would with, with a Void Caller. Okay, yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. I take it all back. If you can just tap into Void Caller and, and make me look silly. <laughs> then, that's all, then that's also fine, guys. What do you think about Shadow Flame this turn? Like, uh, even before the tap, I would like actually attacking with the Imps into Sylvanas. I don't know, I just like silence on the Sylvanas, kill it, and then play Void Caller. Or it, I don't think you can ignore it, maybe. I kind of like Shadow Flame on Big Im Hunter and then Lothab as well. But uh, it's probably fine. But on the other hand, like, you have to clear this. Uh, if you don't clear it, actually, is there a chance to draw a Whirlwind and just win? No, Lothab's down, right? Yep. Yeah, I like okay, this play. Because right, right, yeah. you've cleared off, the, you've, you've reduced the draw from the Acolyte, but the 4 1's still alive and re still represent 4 damage. So and this is going to be really difficult, actually, as Tice is 1 mana off doing a Brawl, which you'd actually be pretty okay with, even on 10 Let mana at this point. Survive. The coin value. No, oh, coin, coin bro. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Awkward. Um. Hmm. She made it in Taskmaster into 4 1. I think like it's a like a necessity. Yeah. Probably because everything else just quite good enough. You won't kill your opponent. He will have that of Argus. He will have some yeah. protector or the heal bot or Jackson. All four. Yeah. And also like if there was like a weapon equipped already, like a death bite second charge, mm -hmm. then powder's mm -hmm. play would have been very different. I like the previous Mal turn. Yeah. Anyway. Malganis here is super good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So this is like, you know, similar to the previous turn that I suggested where you just bank in that, the, the three imps to get in plus two, plus two. Yeah. And kind of cool as well. Like, so the three, one imp, like if Malganis dies, just becomes one, one. So it yeah. doesn't, it's not like Alive. he dies or anything. So you're getting so much value. And the, even now Malganis is, is a bit of a problem because and if you miss the brawl, if hang, hang on, so he gets three. Right? Well, he can. Oh, so, so he can. Yeah, he can. He yeah. can bash. Um, yeah, yeah. If, uh, if he, he can if bash he armor up shield slam. Exactly. You can like. slam first to, to see you execute. Yeah. Then you still have the shield slam. It might actually give you enough brawl value to, ch to brawl first, and uh, if Malgani survives, unlucky, but you will just go for the slam bash uh, shield slam, and if Malgani doesn't survive, you're great. Just, there's just one in. Yeah, well, I think if you brawl, you can't kill Malganis, right? Slam, bash, and shield slam, right? Yes, that's too much mana. That's six. As they execute. Oh, you're right. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, when you can just slam into execute, that's always pretty reasonable as well. Yeah, yeah absolutely. 
I think this is getting a little bit scary though, because what Powder's done pretty well here is not really represent enough onto the board to warrant a good brawl. Other than the previous turn where he couldn't. Um, yeah, he still pressured the Warrior quite heavily, and now I just wouldn't be surprised if we just saw like just Reno, Reno Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, well, you know, just Reno. You have like, to. I mean, like the Warrior just stacking your face is yeah. uh, setting an example that there might be Grumash, and you know that there's a lot of activators. But like he, he could like Reno Argus, for example. But then I feel like you are moving into brawl a bit. Because I think that's that is a brawlable board. So you have to play around the brawl every single turn for the whole game, because you know that the opponent. If you play like, the longer you play, uh the 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 bigger are chances that the brawl will show up, right? Yeah. yeah. But I think it's okay to play around it mm -hmm. every turn. Because look, th this board needs answering. It's going to be awkward. So, you, and, but you're still pressuring the low health of the warrior. Next turn, if this board gets removed, he plays blue. And then the turn after that, he might draw into, you know, we've still seen, a, there was a, is it a Dread, Dread Inferno? Yeah, Dread Inferno. Uh, so, that, you know, we saw one of those yesterday. So that's a 6-6 six, mm -hmm. six he has mm -hmm. to deal with. He has Argus to buff, like, you know, Void Collar Argus and things like that. So I like just the slow and steady attack because the Warrior's going to run out of yeah, actual single target removal. Is Tice here. even playing Alexstrasza in this deck? I don't think so. Probably not. Yeah, we haven't seen it. And he's playing a lot of, you know, he's playing the slams and the bashes. Double shield slam, double shield yeah. block. So, so this means it's a, a real problem brawl. because yeah. right now a warlock being at thirty, like your Grimash can be used as a removal card at best. Mm. Like you, you can try keeping it as a card that will finish the game, but you have nothing to pressure. And, and this is the issue where like uh, Powder's managed to pressure, and like as you see now, there's four damage, uh, you know, and he has to use Grom, and then you know probably just go see Siphon Soul on Grom just because why not? Like Siphon Soul Void Caller maybe. Exactly. Um, because sure. He could even like potentially just try and oh no it wouldn't work because he's on five health. I was thinking about some sort of funky Sylvanas play, um, <laughs> but, but but yeah, it's, it's, he'll, probably, he'll it's probably just not worth it, right? Like, nah, he wouldn't do that. Well, it would be super fun if the if Rena Jackson would have free attack and it would actually be better for 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 Powder in this situation just to still steal the ten one attack. Yeah, yeah exactly. Gromash. But Powder is in a great position overall. Like after cleaning this board, being Powder, I would expect an armor up pass from Warrior next turn. Yeah, and the, yeah, it's just not much he can do. And we've also seen for Tice no true heart, which means his hero power is having like such a, a low effect. In, you know, it's doing half the amount it would if true heart come down, which actually is making a big impact. Yeah. So these these imps are actually doing work because they're doing like significant damage as opposed to just knocking off the armor every turn. Exactly. Powder is not not only powder is not threatened at the moment. He is actually threatening dice. Yeah, that's that's six damage a turn that you can't ignore. But what are you gonna do? You're gonna brawl this board? <laughs> like maybe you might be forced to. Yeah, maybe you have to because you know you've got a second one. But this is getting so rough. Like shield block, okay. But look at all the bombs Powder's still got in hand. He has Emperor, he has Sylvanas, he has Doctor Boom, even the Void Call if he draws another demon. This is looking pretty grim. It's it's nice. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, it's so just Armorsmith not doing much and not having much sitting on this double brawl. Uh, Powder knows there are brawls in hand. He, he was even nodding his head. He knows this is, uh, yeah, I'm in command of this game. I feel great. <laughs> so now Void Call is okay, right? Because if there's a brawl, you get a 6 6. Torison? Yeah, I, I just like this because you don't get locked out by brawl anymore. Yeah, sure. I wouldn't hate actually killing this armor smith with the imps. Like, or like imp and a, and a, a 2 1. Yeah, I think because he's filling the board, he is going to trade the minions away. So then again, the, the brawl doesn't look as crazy. Although he might just have to. Yeah. He might have to, like, what? Just shield slam first on the then void brawl. caller, then brawl, and then hope. Yeah. <laughs> like, might be the case. Yeah. Oh man, tough. And like even drawing the cards for Tice is not that great because he will hit fatigue first. Yeah, and and uh, just I think he's just reaching the potential threat uh, of his deck at Gromash. Like the cap is Gromash, yeah. yeah, and that's about it. So I don't think he even has any more threats in his deck. Yeah, I, that's that, possible. And that's the problem. And because it's it's stacked up against this demon Reno more specifically. If this was the combo Reno, then it just wouldn't be that much. Of, you know, it wouldn't be as much of a problem. But the demons. I mean, look at his hands still. Like I said, <laughs> there's so much like just singular minions that are so powerful still in hand. Um, never mind. Like if this Void uh, gets shield slammed, the brawl happens, and the two-one imp survives. He just plays Doctor Boom. Like. <laughs> It's like, yeah, okay, now do that again. And then after Boom, he just plays Sylvanas. And after Sylvanas, he just brings out, you know, like, whatever. Heal bot to do enough damage. Like, who cares? Absolutely. So, like, normally, um, 
Tyus would actually uh, rely on a fatigue game uh, with the true heart that he uh, hasn't drawn yet, but uh, Powder will be able to deal that damage and win fatigue because there are no threats and no ways to, like, even if he stops the board, he cannot stop it fully. The brawls are mostly dead. be really interesting to see whether I, I half think Emperor might be worth here. But um, but I wouldn't mind if he didn't play anything and just play. You know, like the really he slow doesn't game. have to really. Yeah, that, but Emperor, if it dies, it doesn't matter because look what it's reduced, right? Yeah. So you know, Emperor has a secondary effect. It's not like it's throwing boom on this board and it gets brawled. Like uh, Emperor does something right now, and look at the value of his hand. It, it's kind of crazy. There is a true heart. That's the A minion. But this has to be bro. Yeah. And then just shield slam whatever survives. I got all bash depending on health. Or nothing maybe. No, oh, she shields slam the 6 6. <laughs> it's like, whoops. Inferno shows up. Yeah, I think it's just too much damage. Yep. And now Boom comes down. And then he crawls. And then. Savannah is on doing whatever like he wants. Whatever. Yeah. Jarax at some point. Yeah. Yeah, we've still not seen Draxus, so. Yeah. Twisting yeah. Nether Imp. Yeah! And the thing is, as well, even if there's, like, another threat left in the deck, say there's Alex Traza. He has like Savannah's Shadow Flame now. So yeah, he can steal the threat. Zombie Chow! This is not your time, dude. I can poke at armor. He'll be okay. <laughs> as long as he gets that many attacks in, that just warrants the uh, plus five healing. Well, it's. Oh my god, am I, are we calling Boom surviving? Dr. Boom no, survives. No, he can't. What's Boombot gonna hit for? Two. Okay. Quite fine. Yeah, it's. For, for Tess, there's a problem that the Harrison Jones. Has to be played before the Rexus hits the field. Yeah, that's yeah, actually yeah, true. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> otherwise, you're going to fatigue immediately. Super fatigue. And <laughs> you will just die. Yeah. You'll just die. You will not be able to oh, play Rexus. Speaking of which, I just don't think he needs to play it yet, though. Well. Uh, maybe it's worth playing because Sylvanas can just get on an empty board. I just think gets it's worth with. playing because yeah, yeah. you're so Gromash. Yeah. yeah. You How know, there's no more threats. And How you will your opponent kill you? You do deny Ice yourself owl, owl. a pass <laughs> over, over two over what three turns? You do it deny the molten giants, unfortunately, for yourself. I don't. Yeah, but you gain you gain eight, 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 six sixes every turn, so I think that's pretty okay. You play the zombie channel. now. <laughs> come on, you can get five health. You can even give, give it a taunt. <laughs> zombie chow with the taunt. Come on. No, Is he not you need attacking? the taunt for the six six. Oh yeah. Why? Not attacking because he face. knows there's a Harrison Jones. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. He, that's he actually wants nice him play. to draw the cards. Yeah. That's such and a that's nice. And uh, that's another interesting play that um, a lot of people wouldn't do, actually. How many cards it was? Five? Uh, five cards, yes. Yeah. So free damage fatigue would be five, six damage, and then you uh, fatigue yourself, so you take four against the second damage. So the Chow's about to be going to heal for three. Um, just a guy comes down, gets double hero power, but. I think at this point it's probably just going to be a matter of time as there's swiftly running out of ways to deal with these 6-6s uh, six that are going to come every single turn. And he still has a heal bot as well, so even if this just a car attacks, um, you know, the, the heal bot's going to just negate mm -hmm, that attack mm -hmm. and then he can kill the just a car anyway. Absolutely. So you probably trade it in just a car now, is fine. Um, I don't think trading is actually okay. Uh, really? Hellfire is better, yeah. Yeah. So Hellfire, get a 2-2 two -two dude, and you have 4 more mana. Ran. Yeah. When do you play Sun Fury? I guess when you have two Infernos, right? <laughs> Not sure. attacking. Oh my god, this is such a great plan here. He's now just doing the match. Actually, now you can actually attack, I think. Because you have the power on the board as well, yeah. right? Yeah, but there's a hero hero power, right? Tank up, so... But then, like, Tyus will, will not play this Harrison Jones if, uh, if he has a durability. Hmm. Maybe he plays Acidic Swampoos. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you weren't expecting this. I would All not right. be uh, that surprised if that's the powder's last card. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> All of the weapons from Ties were played, right? Two death spites because he had that opening hand. Yeah. Two auraxes. Two auraxes, yes, and basically that's it. So how does he plan to win this game? Ties? Yep. He hopes Jaraxus will um, fatigue himself. Somehow, he's still getting some or more. Ooh, the oh, Belch is a huge yeah. swing. Well, he still has um, Sun Fury. Inferno. Just now, what's good is he can pretty much ignore the five-five. Um, does Powder need to start attacking now? I think. I think because he he's on the you know Tice is on quite so quite a lot of health. He's not representing a lot of damage, but he's on quite a lot of health. 
I think Powder is in a good shape because he has a heal as well. So, like, if Brown stays alive, he can get him back to full. Uh, so he's not afraid of fatigue damage. Yeah, but the, the problem is that by the time he hits that kind of fatigue, then the heal, like, he'll be fatiguing for so much anyway. But might get him one more turn. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is still looking pretty good for Powder, regardless of what fatigue looks like. Ooh. Absolutely. That's so is that good? Double BGH? No, single BGH from Tyus. So is the only hope for yes, Tyus so. to maybe try to bash face at some point? critical point like find this, this one moment he used one bash already right yeah or, yeah, or, or, yeah he did use one bash already and that's not the cursed trials again so. <laughs> bash face bash face can it win it's three cards i really have no idea what is left in the deck uh, one execute i think um yeah i passed it i think he is only one one execute and one slam i guess Impact. Might not even run one slam. Hmm. He runs a lot of removal. I imagine we'll see like it's like two bash, one slam, uh, versus like two slam and two bash. Oh, if there's a second bash somehow, no, he is not right. There's a third bash. <laughs> a third noble sacrifice? What? <laughs> well, you need to play the big game hunter to have anything on board. That's for sure. Never Harrison Jones. Baby rage. Harrison Jones is like, I need to get the weapon to the museum! <laughs> Allow me! So I think... Hmm, I think you do play heal about this turn, right? Because the jewel affects it. It doesn't heal for loads, but it heals and puts another body on the board. Uh, twisting Nether into a 6-6 six -six dude. Hmm. Mm, but then you or just can... Stand up. Get two damage next time will be at nine. Yeah. You can still like oh, okay, so he's just gonna go Sylvanas. I thought like Healbot Sunfiori was okay here. Third brawl. <laughs> <laughs> no. no revenge. Is there revenge? Would revenge be good? Oh, this is fine. Shadow Flame. Ty is sitting on double revenge, but the revenge is not even active because of uh, Zombie Chow. He actually denied revenge. It wasn't even activated when he was at. He was at thirteen. Oh, he was at thirteen. Okay. Oh, it was active versus Patience. But it's actually cool to like be able to um, deny revenge. If your opponent is like, I got to 12, now I can start start so stacking a bar more. Heal. Yeah. It's like priest versus handlock in the old days. It's like, oh no, heal. You're not tapping. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you're not playing those Walton. Stop it. Flash heal face without Alcanai down. Oh, man. So one execute is there still if, I'm like, if my memory is not you know, making tricks. But um, what's the other card? Whirlwind, Revenge, as you said. Um, that's basically what it can be. Uh, Arc T Frafam. Unfortunately, that won't be help helpful. Because De you Deathwing? You Deathwing would King be nice. Luka. Actually, Deathwing would be Oh my awesome. god. <laughs> the, the problem is Sylvanas, right? But <laughs> I think the main one, one of the secondary issues is Twisting Nether as well. But yeah, Deathwing would be sick. I think you just. Is there any reason to not heal bot this turn? Because. There is still chance. What what fatigue was that then for power? Three. Was it for three? Three. So three fatigue. <laughs> so if you know there is one bash still, <laughs> yeah, oh, he goes for okay. world, absolutely. There's almost no reason not to, right? Look yeah, at yeah. look at all the damage on the board. Like you find, go back up to full. Fatigue's much less of an issue, and you know the warrior's got nothing. And now Powder will not attack into the warrior just to play around revenge. It makes sense. Um, so he has what, 12, 18? Yeah, because he, he has the damage um, to go Acolyte even after hero pain, power. No. Acolyte We're going to see Ac so Acolyte of Pain bash Acolyte to draw that one more card that wins the whole game to draw it Exodia. It all depends what is the last card. I think it is Execute, right? So Maybe Acolyte of Pain and then bash Sylvanas to, to steal Acolyte of Pain. It's <laughs> <laughs> just a pause and Take be like, it. come on. Take it. Come on. Actually, yeah. Uh, oh, wait. What happened? No, it's just bashed face. 6, 18, 20, 23, 28, and the 29. Yeah. That's, that's enough. That's enough. So, uh, Powder on what the back was of the his demon lock. Well, we will never know. We'll never know. We Quick. can ask Tice. <laughs> Mortal Coil the Acolyte. We can actually ask Tice. <laughs> but Powder is the winner, and he advances to top four, eliminates Tice from the tournament. Powder doubles the money, actually gets even more because it's uh, 2,500. Yep. And he doubles the 8 CT points, which is again a bit more because he gets 5. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, 
So yeah. you were lying <laughs> towards them, basically. It's not double. Well, it's congrats fun. to Powder. Yeah, uh, I mean... It was a nail-biting finish between those two guys, right? Yeah, a fati fatigue match, even though it seemed like the Demon Reno lock has an advantage, but it still felt close overall. Was it really that close? I mean, the Gyraxxus just pushed it over the it limit. It wasn't, but it felt like it, right? Imagine because we didn't know what's in the deck. Imagine if the Gyraxxus would have been the last card, or it was pushed out from the Void Caller, an example, right? That would yeah. have changed a lot. In yeah. yeah, the last matchup was definitely good for Powder, but uh, he had some bad matchups there um, in between. So, Powder, congratulations. Thank you. A uh, really well played. Uh, in the in the <laughs> end. Uh, yeah, in, the end. I in the end. Yeah, the yeah. first game was shaky uh, with the Paladin, right? Against the Paladin. Yeah, th that was the second game. That was, yeah. uh, like, in my mind, I just didn't see the secret. And then I just attacked, and I was like, what? What <laughs> <laughs> happened? <laughs> that was a pretty big mistake. You were waking up but, uh, in general. Yeah. Well, like, I think actually the top deck Mysterious in the first game probably just won me the series. It's like, yeah. probably that was the only way I could win that game. Mm -hmm. And it was like two outs out of like 16. And I, I knew it right before, and I just see it come from the right side. I was like, yes. <laughs> okay, I have a chance. Yeah, like without the Mr. Challenger looked very good. Yeah, yeah. That was a great turnaround because you were really behind, and you were able to lock that Sea Giant and then go for that. Um, what happened where you played Paladin versus Paladin and you attack with your Mysterious Challenger into Mysterious Challenger? I mean, I was dead on board. Um, so if I didn't kill the Mysterious Challenger, and like, it, I think the only out for me there was if he didn't have repent, uh, redemption. redemption. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I was thinking. And then, I mean, he did have it. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then you had a really cool uh, game where he was, uh, where Tyson was playing a Control Warrior versus your patrons. Yeah. And a lot of cool stuff happened there. Yeah, I actually thought he was playing patron when I went into it. But then it kind of just ended up like with, with the cards I drew, my strategy kind of became the strategy you kind of won against Control Warrior, where I just like pushed as much damage as I could. And then he top decked the Brawl, which was kind of unfortunate. I don't know if he had one in his hand, but... No, uh, he didn't. no, he didn't. But he was playing two in his deck. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, I mean, I was kind of uh, thinking it's going to come pretty soon. And that's kind of why I didn't. I, I wanted to leave the um, Unstable Ghoul alive just so I would have the 50 50 where uh, my, a patron survives and I would still get two patrons out. Yeah. Uh, but the brawls were kind of unfortunate for me. So both the, the last game and that game. Yeah, and th there was a turn in that Warrior Mirror as well where the girl survived as a 1-1. One -one, yeah. And you chose to play the Lotheb over the, sort of risking the yeah. patron a little bit. The patron looks like it could have won you the game, but it was definitely the risky you play. Because if there was like a bash... Yeah, there was one bash like, left. So I was yeah, just exactly, like... Yeah. I mean, I didn't know he played Harrison. And I knew he had had one card for a long time in his hand, but I, w I thought in my head, like, because I played the naked um, uh, Fairy War Axe, like, I thought that was a pretty good Harrison turn. He would have gotten two cards, yeah. and then he didn't play it. So, I don't know. I thought this, that was the way I would win more likely, I thought. Yeah, makes sense. In the last game, uh, you feel you felt pretty confident coming into the last game? Reno de Demon Reno Log versus Control Warrior? Yeah, I mean, the Demon version is a lot better against Control Warrior, um, especially nowadays. Like, it used to be, like, if you played Ysera, um, it's always just super scary to play uh, Jaraxxus. But since he, you don't play Jusera anymore, and then he used his Grom pretty early, I was like super confident. As soon as I drew my Drax, this is yeah. pretty game over, I thought. Yep. Yeah. The Drax pushed it over yep. uh, to your side. Yeah, and then like I just didn't want to attack with my weapon just because I knew he had Harrison. Yeah. And there's just, if he, if he wants to Harrison, he's going to overdraw a lot, and then I'm just going to win anyways. All right. And um, now you are in the top four, so we don't know exactly who are you going to face next, but uh, have you prepared for a whole top eight or just ice? Um, a little bit of both. Uh, I thought I had a good idea of what Tice was going to play, uh, so I kind of suited my lineup a little bit against that. And then like, I just wanted to bring like a third deck that beats everything, which was Paladin. So I, have, I think my lineup is pretty good against whatever someone brings. Okay, feeling confident. Yes. Guys, may, any more questions to Potter? I think we covered everything. Like yeah, every yeah, single game. Good. Yep. All right. Uh, all right. So that was the first match of the day. Powder versus Tice. Powder is obviously the winner and the first to advance to the top four. We have many more matches for you today, at least yeah. six more, and we'll crown our champions. So stay tuned. We'll have more Hearts and After Show break.